one too. So, okay. Okay. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Norfolk Conservation Commission. It's September 25th. Please be aware that this uh, meeting is video and audio recorded. Uh, uh, just a little bit of, we'll have a public hearing on 39 Mirror Lake, but I just want to tell all the audience that um, if you have a question, raise your hand, take the microphones, there's two microphones, and to speak into the microphone and identify yourself and where you live, and we'll go from there. Uh, so the first thing on our agenda tonight is the 39 Mirror Lake. Uh, NOI 24618. Janet, is Mirror Lake here? Yeah. Yep. There he is. Uh, yes, my name is William Gottwald. I'm the engineer. Um, resubmitted the plans as you guys requested last week. I, Janet has them. I hope she's all set. I believe yes, she is. He did. He did add, add those elevations. Yes, I, I adjusted them to the uh, to the same benchmark. Um, yes. So that was the last thing. And also keep in mind, too, because later on with the homeowner, with them having the elevations, if there is issues or concerns about flood elevations, you've got them all down there. All yeah, the elevations yeah, the, are there for them. Yeah, so. yeah. And plus, that's a, if, if those numbers came across a lot, that's another resource area we have jurisdiction over. So that's, that keeps it nice and clean and cut and dried. So okay. just finish this stuff off, and I also got the order of conditions ready and sent it off to members so they could review them. So hopefully if they're, if they're um, comfortable with that, then those will get issued tonight and you can pick those up tomorrow. All right, that'd be great, thank you. Is everybody on the commission uh, read the uh, orders of conditions? If there's no mirror lake, then I'll take a vote. Uh, we need to close first. Oh, if no yeah, one I'm has sorry. Any more. I can't vote for this. Oh, yeah, that's right. You weren't there. Uh, okay, I'll take a motion to close the hearing on uh, 39 Mirror Lake. Make a motion to close the hearing on 39 Mirror Lake Ave in Hawaii 245. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, now that it's closed, uh, I think we're ready to issue the uh, order of conditions. Um, I'll take a motion for that. I make a motion to approve the orders of commission for 39 Mirror Lake Ave, NOI 240-61. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Is there any discussion from anybody in the audience? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Okay. You're so welcome. tomorrow morning, um, 9 o'clock on, you come by and pick that up. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item is Lake Street Paving. Uh, we'll open that up, and uh, we're ready to issue the order of conditions. We did vote on it at our last meeting, but uh, one of our members wasn't, uh, didn't attend one of the meetings, so he was <coughs> ineligible to vote. So it's basically a <coughs> re-vote. Um, is there any discussion from the commission first on the order of conditions. Okay, and anybody in the audience? Seeing none, I'll accept a motion. Well, first we need to close the hearing. Mm -hmm. No, we had closed it. Oh, did we? Yeah. That, oh, that's right. Uh, all in favor of uh, the order of conditions, say aye. Have to make a motion. Oh, didn't you? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. we did not make a motion. Okay. Make a motion to approve the orders of condition for Lake Street Paving, NOI 240-613. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Was that unanimous? Was yes. That? Okay. yes, unanimous. Thank you. Well, yes, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, um, you're of that paperwork. Well, you'll, you'll get there. Yes. <laughs> Oh, let's sign that first, then we can. Oh, we got little. <laughs> Yay. Don't use red. 
Okay, the next uh, business is um, our old business, and it's regarding 144 Seekonk Street. Our, is a landowner available? I thought I saw his attorney out there. I'll go. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before you move on, move on, if I may. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, point of order. It's 707. This was scheduled for public hearing at 715. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll, we can wait. We'll wait to 715. Go ahead. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the, of the commission. Elizabeth McCormick, 51 Lake Street. Uh, I had asked this commission for the courtesy of a copy of the draft opinion. Um, which I have not received the courtesy of, so we've had absolutely no opportunity to review it. I had heard at your last meeting, obviously you all had reviewed it, and I assume uh, the applicant had the courtesy of receiving a copy. And I would just formally ask, please, for a copy of okay. the, de the decision, the you order can, of conditions. Uh, come get, get it from Amy from the office. I see, but we're not afforded the same courtesy as the applicant was. Uh, I apologize. You could, you could have gotten a, a draft copy. I specifically asked for one. Yeah. I, I can't change what's already happened. No. And I, I had. We'll, and I, we'll make a note of that. Just for the record, also, we have never received one response to any of our correspondence to this commission. So well, typically, it, it our correspond, a correspondence <laughs> to the commission we talk about during our meetings. Uh, and don't send direct letters unless it is something specific that we need to discuss that's not discussed in an open meeting. Um, I understand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. If I could, have you heard back from um, Sam Woodward? No. Okay. I'll maybe I'll make a note to resend that email okay. to him. Because I know he was on the team. The soccer program, he wasn't going to start till November 1st. His father stopped at my house. Oh, did he? Yeah, and he was trying to get it going. Uh, Janet proposed a different trail in order to um, avoid the weather. Okay. So basically going back of the properties this way yeah, first. I wasn't sure where, <coughs> how far back or where we were, other right. than the original open trail that went straight back from the path that I had. Right, so I had walked it and I had sent, you know, the Oliver map and I marked it for David, so he asked me to forward that to him and I haven't heard, so I'll just resend it just to make sure he got that. I was going to take a peek over there. <coughs> so what is it, board of the back of the houses for a while? Parallel. Parallel yeah. yeah, so if this is Alice, you know, and you come in and you're going up yeah. to Campbell, but all these houses, basically, they're all fairly even, so I was yeah. wondering if you just hug the back, back of so those. You got that, some high ground. that, according to Oliver, you wouldn't, it looks like they wouldn't be in the wetlands. And then, you know, and then you just have a little crossing, stream crossing, oh, okay. to go up and yonder. Right, it looked like from the topographical map they had, it was like vegetated wetlands, like the whole path, and there was yeah, no, and it was wide. I'll, um, I'll send that to you, too. All right. Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. we had seen a few uh, action items on the agenda, so we had told our uh, consultants to show up around 7.15. That's so fine. I apologize that we're running a few minutes late, but we just wanted to make that, sure everybody was able yep, to hear. No, that's good. Um, we can we, we can our, wait a couple minutes. Our wetland scientists here are waiting on Steve O'Connell, who presented the AMRAD application okay. to the board, so we'd like him to be here as well. And okay. If you just give him a few minutes, we'd appreciate it. Okay. We'll do, Chris. Mr. Chairman, Steve O'Connell just arrived, so we're ready whenever you okay. are to hear. Uh, Discuss it. Okay. Uh, sure. 
Did we list that? Uh, we didn't list the time on it, did we? Oh, we didn't list the time. Okay. We, it, it, in an email we did? Okay. I, I thought somebody had mentioned 715, so that's what we had told the consultants, so we're running a few minutes. Okay, later. then let's, we'll wait the two minutes, so we're not in time. Then. Yes. Uh, before we open the hearing, uh, a few ground rules. Um, tonight we're discussing wetland resources and wetland resources only. Nothing uh, about the development on the property or any other subjects regarding the property. It's just wetland resources. I ask that, again, uh, if you would like to speak at the time of um, we open up to general discussion, Please uh, take a microphone, identify yourself and where you live, uh, and then proceed. And all uh, questions, et cetera, are directed to the commission, not to individuals. Okay, sitting up at the table is uh, our uh, attorney, Dan Hill, and Lisa, I don't know your last name. Uh, Elizabeth Pyle. Elizabeth Pyle, okay, I'm sorry, uh, who is um, the conservation's uh, attorney on this issue. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's 7.15. First, I want to open it up uh, regarding why we're here and having this hearing. Under Article 7, Section 2 of the Town Bylaw, well, it was the Wetland Protection Bylaw, and the jurisdiction is that the Conservation Commission, as provided in this bylaw, no person shall remove, fill, dredge, build upon, degrade, discharge into, or otherwise alter the following resource areas. And it goes into the, what the resource areas are. Um, because of that, anytime there is a comment made to us regarding uh, a possible violation, it's our duty to um, check into that to protect the wetlands. So tonight, we are talking about 144 uh, Seekonk Street. And Amy, could you put up the timeline for me? And what I have done is kind of put a, put a timeline together how this all has come. Can you make it bigger? <clears throat> it started on basically August 21st of 17 when uh, the building commissioner, Mr. Bullock, sent a letter to Mr. O'Hart stating that um, the property had been uh, cleared of trees and roads graveled in. And that set off the motion. On October 11th, the ZBA meeting, he, Mr. Bullock provided the overview and a cease and desist order was given to the applicant. On April 12th of 2018, the ZBA voted to modify the original order but not have any fines against the cease and desist. And also the town council informed the ZBA that the jurisdiction of wetland resources is not the ZBA, but the Conservation Commission. On December 12th, 2018, the Conservation Commission voted to hire a professional wetland to assess the situation for possible violations and have the commission write a letter requesting permission to enter the site. On March 13th, 
we approved uh, a contract to Patrick Gardner Company uh, to look uh, to go on the property to look at the wetlands. Uh, through legal action, we uh, got a warrant to go on the property, and Mr. Gardner did what we had asked him to do. On August 8th, we got the final report from Mr. Gardner, and the, only the Conservation Commission received this report. Uh, because of the sensitivity in the town, uh, we did not want it to get any kind of biased reaction uh, or noise out in the community. So we kept it until September 11th, where we voted to release it, send it to Mr. O'Hart, and then give it to the public on September 12th. And so on September 12th, that was done. An email with the report was sent to Mr. O'Hart. A hard copy by certified mail was sent to Mr. O'Hart. And a link to the report was put on the Conservation <coughs> Commission's webpage. So going from there, I would like to first have Patrick Gardner, our consultant, uh, provide his uh, summary of the report his findings and report. I'm Patrick Garner. Uh, good evening. Okay. Apparently I'm live. So I was uh, initially involved in this project uh, in early 2018. I was hired by the Zoning Board of Appeals to do a peer review uh, that had come before them uh, on this same project. Um, as Mr. Curry notes, the building inspector had been out on the site ahead of me and had noted extensive land clearing. And when I was on the site on uh, February 19th, 2018, uh, I noted the same thing. There was extensive uh, road widening and Title V, it appeared, testing that had been conducted on the site. Uh, when I was out there, I also noted uh, at least two areas and possibly three that might have been wetland alterations, uh, but I wasn't tasked with that observation at the time. Uh, I simply reported that uh, that may have occurred. So with that overview, let me note that I'm not, uh, I have not reached conclusions at this point. I'm making, uh, I've made observations on a second site walk that was conducted in May of this year, and I have recommendations I'm going to make okay. after I go through that, that information. Okay, so the uh, Conservation Commission asked me, I, I hope this is readable, uh, to do a number of things. Uh, one was to conduct an assessment of uh, possible alterations uh, of wetland resources on the site uh, as defined by state and local statutes, and that would include the town bylaw protecting wetlands, to identify wetland resources within uh, areas for possible alteration uh, to use various resources in that analysis, including uh, photographs and uh, different mapping, uh, to take soil samples, which I had not done uh, the previous year, uh, to determine if any possible violations existed, uh, to prepare a written report, and then to work with uh, town legal counsel if necessary. So I'm going to focus uh, on three, uh, three areas. Uh, for orientation, uh, Seekonk Street is over here, and as the crow flies, it's about eight or 900 feet from uh, the entrance on Seekonk into the site. And for further orientation, there's a little wetland finger that's shown on <coughs> land here. Uh, those are wetlands that have been affirmed and approved already. And further, there's a blue dashed line that comes up. That's the red lines, the numbering, and the blue lines are, are my uh, notations on this uh, plan to sort of denote the areas I focus on. So there was an area here that we're going to come look at in detail, number one, a further area, number two, and then an area number three below that. And those were my three areas of focus and nowhere else on the site, including uh, the lower section, did I find any uh, problems. I did walk the lower wetland that had been flagged by, I believe, Crossman, um, and uh, had no, no issue with any of the wetlands that were delineated there. 
So my entire investigation was whether there were other wetlands and whether they um, may have existed or not. And so that's really what we're focusing on tonight. So this is a, uh, can you make that slightly smaller? Okay. So this is uh, what I'm calling figure one, and this is area one. And if we go back to that, that first map, that is right here. And I'm going to note, too, that this number one is, is a little mismarked. It's really over in this area. But at the time this map was developed, I had believed it was in, in that section. So when I was out in February of 2018, I noticed an area that was flooded, held standing water. Uh, this whole section had been cleared. It appeared that it had been cleared at least in the last year, uh, possibly in less time than that. It had no new vegetation. The ground was all disturbed. There was little to no herbaceous growth anywhere in the site. And this was, um, again, this was February, so th there, you can see that there was no snow on the ground. Uh, it was probably, there hadn't been uh, recent strong storm activity, so this was, in my opinion, likely to be groundwater contact uh, that was filling this area. I made no attempt to um, make measurements of the area, uh, nor did I do so this year when I went back out the second time. I had not been given any um, right to uh, survey the property in, in or out. This is the same property uh, in May of this year. So this is two months later, uh, May 3, three months later, um, early spring, and you can see that it's totally dry. But it's begun to become vegetated, and we have growth coming into the area that was not there earlier. And it's got extensive uh, fact and fact wet grasses and sedges. These are indicative of possible wetland areas. Uh, I did look through this area for uh, hydric soils, and there was evidence of the formation that was beginning of, the hy of hydric soils, but there was not a, a, a definitive uh, indication to me that, that they were necessarily there. I want to note, coming back to this original photograph, <coughs> that under the town bylaw, um, areas uh, of flooding uh, are protected. Uh, there, there are two categories that, that m this may be protected under. One is under ponding, and the town protects ponds that are greater than 5,000 square feet in area. I don't know whether this qualifies. That's going to be one of my recommendations uh, later. Uh, and it also uh, protects areas that are flooded. Um, that being said, it's very obviously e ephemeral in its flooding. And I suspect that at the most it holds water uh, a few months a year. And it would be dependent on uh, drought conditions, rain, snow melt, the various factors that we normally look at. So this is a slightly cleaned up version of the first plan you saw. The pond, which had been shown over here, has now been moved to here. This is uh, more likely. And this is based on uh, Andrew's uh, survey marking of areas that have been disturbed. So these red areas were part of the mapping turned in by Andrew's to the zoning board in 2018, showing areas of disturbance. Not areas of wetland disturbance, but areas of site disturbance where their backhoes or machinery had recently done clearing. And the pond falls right in that, that little area right there. So again, that's the ponded area. And otherwise, what I'm indicating here for a possibly intermittent stream and other areas of disturbance uh, did not change. This is a, a view of the intermittent stream that I encountered in February 2018. This little section here, it's going to be a little hard to read. I'm going to have to go back and forth with this area right here is identical to this area here. This is sort of the headwaters of that little stream. Um, and you can see that the different color in here, this is uh, fill that's gone into this area. It's all sand. Again, a little hard to orient, but this is the edge of this area that has, that has uh, been filled. And the stream itself 
begins here and works backwards, back to the woods into the lower uh, wetland on the back. Very distinct crisp break through here. And we'll take a look at, I, I spent a lot of time looking at soils underneath this area. So this is an example of some of the, the soil tests that I took through here. What I found basically was that in this, uh, let me go back here, in this area right here, which is not area number two, that there's a, a, a fill area of six, six to 12 inches of, of fresh sand. When I was out um, initially in 2018, there was no evidence of herbaceous growth, but in a year's time, this has all begun to, to come in pretty rapidly. And it's a lot of sedges and grasses. Again, this is a, an example of some of the organic material that uh, was down at about 9 to 12 inches. Again, this is another example here of some of the augering that, that was done. This is again area two. And the stream to orient you is here and goes down to the right and downhill. Uh, in February 2018, this little section was ponded. Um, I'm not sure why it was dug out, but it was freshly, it had been freshly uh, excavated at the time I saw it in 2018. And you can see the difference here. This is all fresh ground. It has not uh, had any vegetation coming on it. It was not backfilled, <coughs> uh, so it's unlikely. I, I, I couldn't reach a conclusion before the zoning board, and I still haven't, about why it was excavated and what it, what it was. But it's in that same area. This is the identical area, and um, this is mislabeled. I'm saying it's February 2018. This was actually May of 2019. So this is the same area again, very similarly to the ponded area that I was referring to as area one. This is area two, dry as a bone. But again, vegetation beginning to show up through this section. Uh, soil sampling through here was hydric. Uh, soil sampling back on the back beside the stone was not. This is a drawing, a sketch that was inside my report. This is uh, figure 11 that's part of the same report that you've got. This is the, the, the intermittent stream right through here. Uh, this is the ponded area that I was showing, a small ponded area. And this is the area that appears to have been filled. Well, it has, it has been filled, but it appears to have possibly been an area of bordering vegetated wetland. And we'll, we'll come back and talk about that in a moment. So before I get into my conclusions, let me try to spend a few minutes talking about why this is potentially important. If this was, in fact, an area of BVW, which it would be bordering lands, oh, I'm sorry, bordering vegetated wetlands, it would be protected under the Wetland Protection Act as well as under the town bylaw. And it would be bordering because it would be connected by this stream that comes down to the lower wetlands uh, in, in the, the area that's already been approved. If this area turned out or turns out not to be jurisdictional, then the stream itself is not jurisdictional under the Wetland Protection Act. It's an odd. Uh, it's not a little dance that the Wetland Protection Act does, but it says basically that if there's an intermittent stream and it is bounded up gradient by wetlands, by uh, uh, vegetated wetlands, the stream itself then becomes protected. But if it flows and it's intermittent, but it does not have up gradient wetlands, then the stream itself is not protected. So I'm talking about the regulations under the Wetland Protection Act. Uh, whether it's protected under the town, town bylaw is an animal that the commission itself has to adjudicate. So this area was an area that I, I investigated carefully um, to uh, see whether, in fact, there were underlying organic soils in the section. I had not done that in 2018. I did so in May of this year. And the vast majority of the, the holes that I dug in this area, augering, uh, did turn up evidence of 
wetland soils. So let me go back to, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to see if I can get back to this, this map. You'll notice on this map here also I had area one, two, and then I had an area three over here. I don't show area three on this plan because when I went to look at that, there was nothing. There, were, there was simply not any evidence of any wetlands, stream, anything. There had been a former map uh, that had been generated about 11 years ago that showed a wetland finger coming up through here and connecting to a wetland pocket up in this area. <coughs> I found no evidence that that had ever been there whatsoever. So I then began to focus only on these two sections here. So again, this is, this is the, the wetland that's been affirmed by the commission. This is the intermittent stream that comes up and then connects to this potential area of fill. So my conclusions are that area one, which is that ponded area, is potentially a town protected ephemeral pond. I'm recommending that it be survey located in late winter to determine the maximum extent. And I do that because the, the bylaw protects us. Greater. I don't know what that is. It's large enough to warrant uh, a, a survey check of that. My conclusion on area two is that it's likely to be filled BBW. I'm not reaching any that conclusion. I'm again saying that it warrants a detailed investigation and that if it's confirmed as filled BBW, the intermittent stream connecting area two to the downgrading of BBW itself becomes a protected resource. Uh, Again, to underline this, the intermittent stream would not be protected under the WPA if it doesn't have upgrading and wetland. So that, that becomes a, a key factor. And then area three was found not to contain state or locally protected wetlands. So my recommendation, um, which I, I don't add to this, but my recommendation is that um, I recommend that the commission, if this comes before you, uh, as a notice of intent at some point that it be peer reviewed and I would recommend that that occur by a third party uh, unaffiliated uh, wetland expert who can go out and spend the necessary time particularly in area two making that determination because that's that's really the key uh, area one um, I don't know I don't know it I, needs to be surveyed it needs to be surveyed the, the difficulty with surveying it to determine its extent is that that's seasonally very well. Yeah. Uh, and, and your bylaw says, I think it's either a five or 10 year period, the greatest maximum extent in that chunk of time. So you can't hold your, I don't think, your, your applicant to that lengthy period of time. Right. But if you had in winter, late winter, and you try to locate it, and we're going through a period of low snowfall, relative drought for that season, then it's, it's, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. The bylaw doesn't address a period of high rainfall, so you got the other side of it. Um, but th th this is where the commission begins to yeah. make, its, make its, its decisions. So area one needs to be looked at and it needs to be looked at reasonably and objectively at some point um, by someone who's empowered to go out and survey that area. And I've talked extensively about area two, so I think uh, I'd be happy to take questions or, okay, or first, sit down. Um, from the commission, is, do you have any questions about the report? I know we've talked about it extensively in executive session with Janet and what this all means. And Janet, do you have any comments? These conclusions weren't in your report, though, right? These conclusions are done for the speech. Oh, okay. But, okay. They're, they're basically but no, but just so we'll have it for it. reference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. What I what I don't have in the report itself are recommendations, but I think they're relatively self-evident. Okay. Yeah. I mean, these are my observations. I think there's enough that warrants doing a more detailed look at some point when you have the opportunity. Um, I, I'm not. As I've said, I'm, I'm not saying this is what it is. I'm saying there's evidence that it may have been. Okay. Well, I think what we're going to do at this time is let Ted O'Hart and his uh, team uh, talk about the report and what our findings were and 
let that go, and then we can discuss it in general then of right. s in specifics. So, Ted? You got a microphone right there. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, some of us have met, some of us have not. My name is Christopher Agostino. I'm counsel for the Oak Arts. I'm also counsel for Lakeland Hills, which is uh, the applicant before the Zoning Board of Appeals on a Chapter 40B application uh, that has been pending for quite some time now. Um, it's rare. Uh, it's actually something that uh, never happens that a 40B applicant appears before the CONCOM. So we were actually torn as to whether or not we were going to show up tonight. Uh, but given that uh, it was represented to us that the Conservation Commission was going to keep an open mind and that there was no predetermined conclusion that the Conservation Commission was seeking to uh, arrive at, uh, despite the evidence or some of the reports that have been issued to date that made me skeptical of that statement, we're still proceeding on that basis and, and hope that um, we get to the right spot, so we figured we'd appear tonight. Okay. Uh, you started this evening by saying this, this uh, exchange started in August of uh, 2017. Yeah. Um, but uh, unfortunately, that timeline was, was not adequate to really understand why we're here and what the history of this site is. And I think it's critical to know the history of this site in order to uh, understand why we're really here before the commission. The history or the recent history starts back in 2007 when uh, a prior uh, developer owned the site and was evaluating the extent of wetlands on the site. They sent uh, a wetland scientist, Mr. Dan O'Driscoll, out to the site to do a preliminary delineation uh, <laughs> that appeared before this board when it undertook to uh, inst instigate this investigation um, that showed one wetland resource on the site. Okay, that one wetland resource, and that was a bordering vegetated wetland that we're all familiar with, the finger that extended through the site. Um, at the time, they did extensive soil testing, including a test pit uh, that is still on the site today uh, with a monitoring well that is very close to exactly where Mr. Garner claims is now uh, potentially uh, additional bordering vegetated wetland. Which number, two? Uh, TP1. Number sorry, area. TP2. Okay. Oh, sorry, Area 2. Yeah. Sorry. But the test pit on the plan is uh, TP1, I believe. But there's a test pit located on all these plans where extensive soil testing had been done. Amy, do you have the SORAD plan that you could put up? So as we all know, that development did not go forward back in 2007, but there was extensive clearing that was done on the site at the time. And Mr. O'Driscoll can explain what he did at the time tonight. Um, but people were on site back then clearing trees and uh, clearing uh, quite a bit of area that was mistaken later in 2017 for site clearing that Mr. O'Hart did and okay. was alleged to have been major clearing. So there's been some confusion about the extent of that. In any event, how do we get to the clearing, okay? Uh, Mr. O'Hart began his Chapter 40B process uh, early in 2017 or even before that, but it started with an application to Mass Housing. All right? And when he applied to Mass Housing, this town was notified of that. Yeah. And there were visits to the site by, I know the conservation agent had been out there several times, um, reviewed the condition of potential wetland resources throughout the site, something that um, we may or may not disagree on, but she walked the entire site uh, many times, and she's very familiar with it, I'm sure, okay? And at no time was there ever a suggestion that there were additional wetland resources on site. So Mass Housing issued a project eligibility letter for Mr. O'Hart's proposed development in July of 2017. That project eligibility letter said, the town has concerns about extensive ledge on the site. The town has concerns about the level of groundwater on the site. The town has concerns about your ability to construct this project Therefore, you should go out and do extensive soil testing and be prepared to discuss the conclusions of that soil testing with your application to the zoning board. All right, so having been directed to do that in July of 2017 mm -hmm. and having seen prior plans showing one wetland resource, having had the conservation agent uh, been on site and, and also not say t that there were other wetland resources that we needed to investigate, with everyone having the understanding that there's one wetland resource on site, Mr. O'Hart went out there 
and did additional soil testing, including testing looking for ledge that required extensive excavation, not necessarily consistent with Title V testing, but he dug holes looking for ledge to determine the extent of it, as he was directed to do by mass housing. So that is critical, that the testing in question and the work in question was under the auspice of direction from mass housing that is in connection with a Chapter 40B project. And that's where everything went off the rails, mm -hmm. okay? Because under Chapter 40B, there's supposed to be one local hearing before the zoning board, all right? Which is why we're not supposed to be here in front of this board. However, um, at the advice of council, uh, Hill Law advised the town of Norfolk that uh, this board was able to investigate that soil testing under its jurisdiction under the local wetlands protection bylaw. All right? Yeah. Now, we disagree with that conclusion. And we have pending litigation against this board in order to get a declaration that we shouldn't even be here. This board does not have jurisdiction to hear anything having to do with this site while there's an application pending before the zoning board and while uh, Mass Housing has directed us under a project eligibility letter to do soil testing on site. Any argument about that should be before the zoning board, okay? Now, um, that's where uh, the hearing before this board commenced. When the zoning board referred this matter or referred the question of soil testing to this board, all right? So this, this investigation did not initiate with this board, did not initiate Correct. with the conservation agent. Correct. All right, and there's been no discussion with this board of, of those prior uh, ORAD proceedings. Mr. Chairman, you were a member on the board at the time of the ORAD application, which was pending at the time Mr. O'Hart did this soil work. Uh, Mr. Wilson, you were also a member of the board at the time, all right? And allegations of wetland disturbances were brought to the board's attention. And Janet DeLonga was sent out to investigate whether there was any disturbance. And at the time, announcements were made during the hearings that there was no uh, credible evidence that the wetland resource was disturbed by the soil testing. So at the time, we had an open uh, case with the zoning board, and uh, we presented evidence to the zoning board explaining that there was no site clearing that is at issue, and uh, they expressed a desire to move forward, so we settled the matter with the zoning board on that allegation back in uh, 2018, early 2018, understanding that this board had already investigated the allegations of wetland disturbance and issued an ORAD for, again, the same wetland resource area that was to be delineated at the time, okay? It's the same area, all right? And Mr. Garner just described that if, if the area that he is alleging is a wetland has connectivity via stream, then this entire area would be border, bordering vegetated wetland, Yes. okay? You've already delineated that bordering vegetated wetland. It's right here, okay? And the DEP affirmed that with one exception and identified a new isolated vegetated wetland. And we can, and we'll explain more about that and why that's important uh, in a moment with the experts that we've brought tonight. Um, but it, it's important to understand that this was an open hearing before this board at the time. If there was a time to investigate allegations of wetland disturbance, it should have been then. I, okay, let me okay. interrupt if I could on just the, those couple points. Is the ANRAD of eight August of uh, 17 was for borderland vegetation only, nothing on the inside. And that's when Janet and the DEP were out there and they confirmed everybody was in agreement. They did not look into the center of the project because that was outside of their scope. That's not an accurate representation as to what happened. This is the BVW. If Mr. Garner's correct, it would extend up the hill. It is the same wetland resource area, something that has been misrepresented numerous times. Okay. Uh, right? Janet, now, you can, you can wait, rebut wait, wait, that. Wait, first, but let me just, if I may, so, and then we just continue on. Janet, what you have your paperwork on. Right. It. You know the um, ANRAD form. Yes, I'm familiar with it. Right, okay, so bordering vegetated wetlands, they didn't indicate any other resources that was out, and then they issued the ORAD with those certain flags. And even that form says the one that conservation issued, not, not with DEP going out there. And even the form 
too many papers, I'm sorry. The form that gets issued, page three on the state form, says that's all that's being agreed to. It doesn't mean that there aren't others. It's it, the wording is on the on the state form. I'm familiar um, with the form. And Brad, okay, and, and it's it's the finding section. And uh, just to introduce the team tonight, I'm here. Okay. I'm here with just to let everyone know right. who else is here with me. I'm here with Dr. John Rockwood, yeah, right there. Uh, who's also been engaged by the applicant. Um, he has a Ph.D. in soils and plant science, and he's a certified uh, professional wetland scientist with the Society of Wetland Professional Certification Program, which is the only certification program for wetland scientists. Otherwise, anybody can call themselves a wetland scientist, but only certain people can call themselves professional wetland scientists. I'm also here, as I mentioned, with Dan O'Driscoll, who can testify about the conditions on the site prior to any disturbance, as well as Steve O'Connell, who was here uh, presenting the ANRAD to the board, and he can explain what was presented to the board okay. in that application, as well as David Crossman, who was the wetland scientist, again, who saw the site before any alterations were done in 2017. Okay. So we're both going to describe what was the condition before, <laughs> what the ANRAD application was for, and what, um, and Mr. Mr. Rockwood is here to critique just the means and methods that Mr. Garner employed in reviewing uh, the alleged disturbance. Okay. But in any event, will it dis agree to disagree as to the effect of the ORAD, okay? okay? What I'm saying is the BVW, and there was a peer review at the time that Mr. Hutchinson did and presented to this board, and it was asked of him whether or not that BVW continued to extend up gradient from flag 71, 70, 70, 71, and 72, all right? That was the question, whether it extended up the hill, okay? So that inquiry, inquiry as to how far up the hill it went was open in the ORAD application. And now we're here today having a discussion that it goes all the way up the hill. It's connected by a stream to another bordering vegetated wetland. Right? That's what we're saying was the ANRAD application at the time. So put that aside for the moment, okay? okay. It was announced to this commission by Vice Chairman of the Zoning Board, Mr. Mike Caliza, that the reason this was referred to the commission was in order to reduce the scope of the Chapter 40B development that was proposed before the Zoning Board. All right. Now, we have emails between Zoning Board members and Hill Law and uh, the town planner that the Garner investigation needed to be coordinated with the Zoning Board and referred to the Conservation Commission in order to sidestep 40B. You have those emails in your record, okay? You can interpret them for yourselves, but there was talk at the time that it needed to be referred to the Conservation Commission for the purpose of sidestepping Chapter 40B. I, this commission doesn't, members don't, weren't, I don't think we were aware of those internal emails. Well, so because, again, uh, to step back, we've, all, they're all new members within the last couple of years, and everybody here is unbiased, doesn't bring anything baggage with them uh, and personal opinions about any of the projects that we're talking about. So we're trying to do as best we can and as clear as we can to give uh, every applicant the, <coughs> the right review. I appreciate that. And Mr. Wilson had the, the presence of mind at the time to say, hold on, we, we can't consider reducing the scope of the Chapter 40B project. Right. Okay, that, that wasn't no our intent. It. Well, unfortunately, it was announced that that was the genesis of this investigation. And as a practical matter, I have to present it to this board as one of the arguments that we're making as to why we should not be here and why we went out of our way to try to get a declaratory judgment against this board that it was inappropriate from the start. Okay. So I have yep. to present that for you to consider, okay? Um, and from there, my conversations with town council were that we would welcome the zoning board to investigate any allegations that they wanted on site. We invited them. We have an application in front of the zoning board. They are engaging a wetland scientist at our expense to go up there. They can do that. But the problem with that is, is that they're trying to remove it from the jurisdiction of Chapter 40B, okay? Now, Attorney Hill can obviously argue to the contrary, but um, we've invited you on site, we invited this board on site and its experts on site under the auspice of Chapter 40B 
but we would not allow Mr. Garner on site, okay, because he's not credible. The former chairman of this board said that Mr. Garner's not credible. All right, at the time he applied to pr produce this work, he had an open uh, disciplinary action before uh, the Division of Professional Licensure for exceeding the scope of his license as a land surveyor. All right, the standing order in the industry is not to let Mr. Garner on site. Okay, so that's why we would not allow you to go on site, and that's why we forced you to get uh, a warrant, or we didn't force you to get a warrant, you decided to go get a warrant on your own, but we invited the town to go on site, okay, under the ZBA, all right, but that wasn't good enough. So then you obtained I, I a warrant. I just have one question since we're on this. You didn't want Mr. Garner to go. But at the point that you were given the opportunity, you asked us to go, even if you didn't want Mr. Garner to go, you could have brought your own scientist with Mr. Garner at the time, and Mr. Garner would have been no consequence, and we had, there would have been no issue. So it would have been the onus on you at that point to say, well, we don't really like Mr. Garner, we don't trust Mr. Garner, we don't think he's appropriate, but we're going to have one of the gentlemen that you brought with us on site to just to, dis to, to have some discussion with Mr. Garner about what they're actually seeing and why um, the soil levels do not mirror the actual soil levels that are consistent in the neighborhood around that disturbance. And that would have been appropriate to say to Mr. Garner, I see what you're seeing, but this is why it's like that. And that's why I think it's important that, in, that, that we make that known, that you had every right to have, we never said you cannot have Anybody that you want out there, you were given issue on uh, notice that we were proceeding with a warrant to go on the property, and then we had to get the warrant to go on the property, um, and then we had Mr. Garner go out, and at any one of the times during when you got the warrant, when you were noticed that we had the warrant, you could have had somebody go out with Mr. Garner, and that wasn't yeah. the case. You could have said, instead of getting this warrant, why don't we do this? Have Mr. Garner and my I, professional I, I, go out at the same time. I volunteered anyone but Mr. Garner. Again, well, he's not credible. And, but okay, beyond, that, beyond that, I started by saying we're not supposed to be here. Okay? Okay. That's why we didn't show up, because we're only supposed to be in front of one board. This is a perversion of the Chapter 40B process to have this hearing. Okay? This hearing's supposed to be in front of the zoning board. Now, Hill Law is exploiting what they perceive as a loophole. If this gets that far, that loophole will be closed. Okay? Because we cannot have uh, soil testing that's done in furtherance of a 40B application be subject to the jurisdiction of a CONCOM because that creates two hearings. So that's why we did not do it. That's a perfectly reasonable explanation. Beyond that, we were not informed that you obtained a warrant. But before that, we gave uh, Mr. O'Hart, I think, three opportunities that we wanted to come on the property and there was no response. We were not in front of this board. We had an ORAD, we were in front of the zoning board. That's a legal argument. That's why we sued this board. All right? And we're having such difficulty to get a declaratory judgment because you haven't done anything yet. So mm -hmm. if you get to that point, then we might be able to resolve these. But I think I'm hopeful that we'll see that this is not credible information. Okay? This is predetermined conclusions to subvert the Chapter 40B project. project all right? It was announced to this commission. That's why we didn't respond. So that you understand that, and that's Who very important. Who on this important. commission was that announced to? Excuse me. Who on this commission was your that? Your council. So council has to tell you that we invited the zoning board to engage in that. That we invited anyone but Mr. Gardner. In any event, we were not notified <coughs> that you obtained a search warrant. But then, even from there, the search warrant was not exercised properly. All right. Understanding, and this board knew because you said at the time on April seventeenth of 2018 that Janet DeLonga was going to go up with Mr. Garner. You said that was going to happen. He went up there alone, unannounced. Was no one told, uh, told us about it. So that's the second time he's conducted this work alone. And where he's not credible to begin with, that's, that's a threshold issue that should have been resolved. Okay. All right? Even if you got a warrant, maybe give us a call ahead. Maybe we might have sent someone up there with him. It was announced after the fact. All right? Anything he collected that day was collected illegally. Okay, and if you try to use it, we will move to suppress at that time. That's the appropriate time to do it. Again, we tried to do it earlier, but nothing uh, was before, it, there was nothing to suppress. Okay. All right, and we left it at that. But in any event, okay, um, with those issues, 
outlined. All right. Mm -hmm. And I know I, I, I'm I'm making some strenuous points here. All yep. right. But having read the emails, having heard a zoning board member appear before this commission that the action is intended to reduce the scope of the project, you can't unring that bell. No, just okay. No. What I want you to do is remember exactly what happened during that meeting. That had nothing to do with this commission. And then let that member know exactly that. And if you look at another meeting, another one of of um, the abutters and made a you know a claim of something and I said and on record Mr. Hart has a right as much to build on this property as you don't want Mr. Hart to build on this property but it is up to the Commission all due fair to proceed as how we feel is deemed fair so this Commission and the members right now um, whatever the zoning board feels whatever the neighbors feel that's of no consequence to us I our only it. consequence right now is that commission it doesn't matter whether you build an airport a shelter a school or or 40b that's not our concern I our concern that. is the investigation the, the that you, is you the, voted yeah. you voted to initiate an investigation mm -hmm. okay based on testimony from attorney Pyle and attorney hill Mm -hmm. and observations of water pooling on frozen ground that were taken when Mr. Garner trespassed on the property the first time alone and took pictures of pooling water on frozen ground and pointed at a puddle and said that that's excavation below seasonally high groundwater. He can't make that conclusion by looking at a puddle. He said it again tonight. He didn't do any soil tests in the area. He does not know the level of groundwater. All right, that was an, that was not evidence that this board should have undertaken the investigation on. That's why we sued this board. Okay. okay, so I appreciate your willingness to say that you're independent and that you are strictly looking at the science. We're going to explain to you why the science that Mr. Garner has presented is incorrect. Both the methods that he used when he went up there uh, in May were incorrect. They were not in accordance with the DEP manual. All right. And the conclusions that he drew from those observations were incorrect. So we'll present that to okay. the board. Please. But, but beyond that, you've heard our arguments as to why any action that you might take based on this is incorrect. So it's all on the record, all right? And depending on what this commission decides to do with it, then you can go from there. But I would ask, since we have four experts here, okay, that are going to describe two things, all right? Dan O'Driscoll is going to describe what he did in 2007 in his observations. David Crossman is going to describe, uh, describe his observations. Again, pre-disturbance, because apparently this board is investigating a disturbance. All right? So you're going to hear testimony. You had Janet DeLonga, who was on site before. I haven't heard anything from her about whether she saw a stream, a bordering vegetated wetland that even if we were only asking you to put blinders on and review one bordering vegetated wetland in the middle of the site, even if that, Someone would have had to have walked by the very area that you're investigating now in order to get down there. So knowing that we were going to develop the entire site, why wouldn't anyone have said, hey, maybe you want to do uh, a wetland form on this area. It might be bordering vegetated wetland. There might be a stream here. We're concerned about it because none existed. Okay. Right? The former chairman said that he had not seen any credible evidence. He's since resigned over this. All right. There was no credible evidence at the time. Suddenly, Mr. Gardner became credible. I don't know when, all right? So I appreciate the board's willingness to take an independent look at this, all right? But hear the, uh, the evidence and the testimony from the people that were on site before the disturbance, okay? Hear from Mr. Rockwood, doc, I'm sorry, Dr. Rockwood, as to why the methods were not in accordance with the DEP handbook on investigating disturbed areas and the conclusions were incorrect. Okay, and then I'm sure you'll hear, you'll, hear, you'll hear from Hill Law as well. Yeah, so well, I, I, we'll do that at the end. I'd like yeah to have your people. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to David them the mic. first, um, yeah. who delineated the wetland, and uh, and he feels strongly about this because if uh, <coughs> Ted, in fact, uh, if this board continues to suggest that that wetlands were filled, then the area that he delineated uh, was obviously insufficient. Now he's got strong things to say about that, so. With that, Mr. Crossman. Okay, m Mr. Crosby. Hi, I'm Dave Crossman from BNC Associates. Crossman. Um, back in 2015, 
Andrew Survey and Engineering uh, hired me to delineate the wetland BVW and all actually all wetland resource areas that were present within the site and within a hundred feet of the site. So you start um, you can park off the road here. There were existing trails that ran around the entire site. There's a trail that comes all the way up here, comes right down the side here, and goes out and comes actually back across the same wetland all the way up into here. In order, I already knew that this um, resource area was here based on GIS maps. Um, so we started, we walked down this path here right through this area that Mr. Garner is claiming is area two. Um, looked around in this whole area for any resource areas. We did find this area off site. It's a big, it's a large isolated vegetated wetland. Mm -hmm. uh, we delineated that area. Um, we came up in here, we started this delineation and brought it all the way up approximately in here and then back down. This flows off site down the hill to another larger wetland down the hill. Um, then we proceeded. Doesn't that, excuse me, doesn't that mimic what Pat is suggesting for the uh, item two? Well, he's saying that there's an area up in here. Additionally, that it begins, yeah. Right here. We cut this off down here. And this area was BVW. There's a small intermittent stream within the BVW. After we had completed this work, we crossed we searched along the perimeter and through the center of the site and all down through this area for any other resource areas, isolated resources, um, uh, bordering uh, isolated land subject to flooding or isolated vegetative wetlands. We did not find any. The area that is shown on Mr. Garner's map as area one was not disturbed at that time. That area was oak and pine forest and this area here is also the same thing. You can actually see the cuts that were made from the hill. This is there's a pretty good sized hill with some ledge, a lot of ledge right here. You can see the cut where the water is in the hole now that they made when they actually dug that out. And you can see if you look at the even Mr. Garner's photos, that the soil on the edge of that hill is a bright colored what's considered to be upland soils. So at that time, we did not feel that this was a resource area. Um, the ORAD was, f an ANRAD was filed with conservation. I walked the site again with Ed Hutchinson. He agreed with this delineation. He agreed with this delineation. He felt that there might be a small area up gradient of where I had flagged that could be also, would extend my wetlands slightly. He asked me to perform the DEP data forms, which I gave to him, and he accepted them at that time that the limit of my flagging was the limit of the resource area. Now, that this, the ORAD was appealed to DEP, and we had Gary Dolmain come out here with D, from DEP, and we walked. Every time we come out here on this site, you have to walk right by this area. Now by this time, by the ORAD time, this area had been dug out. But you have the trail comes right through here. You know, it's shown in Mr. Guyner's report that there's an existing trail. There's always been an existing trail here. So everybody who comes through here has to walk right by Area 2. Ed Hutchinson never felt that Area 2 was a wetland or that there was any wetland that had been <coughs> altered. Gary Domain did not feel that that was an area that had been altered. Um, he came down here. He felt that there might be an area, again, slightly above my wetland flags. He came back. We actually came back a second time, and we ended up adding a smaller little isolated, vegetated isolated wetland above my BVW line. But that does not extend up to the cart road. It doesn't even come close. You can't see it from the cart road. 
Then we had a site walk with Janet. Janet. <laughs> and um, I believe one of the abutters and Ted. And we, again, walked all the way down here. We spent a lot of time in this area looking at all these things. And there was another, actually, another area that looked like it could be a wetland area that was kind of, but that's, we all determined the soils within that area were upland soils. But we all, and then we walked the complete site. We walked all the way around this wetland and took that path all the way up the backside. And at no time during that site walk did anyone suggest that there was a BVW upgrading of the ones that I had flagged. In fact, no one even suggested that there was an intermittent stream in this valley that comes through here. I did go out and take another look um, last week. And there is water in that hole, or there was water in that hole when we were out there, but not, it's pretty dry right now, but you can see where the, ex I'm going to assume it was an excavator, cut the side of the hill and started digging a hole. The whole, s that whole area underneath the topsoil is a nice bright colored upland soil. Excuse me, are you talking about area two? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, we augured in area two, and I didn't find any anything but bright colored soils in the first 12 to 18 inches. Uh, we also augured up in area one. When was this? Um, <coughs> last week. Oh, last week. Yep. And you can also see in the photographs where the excavator had cut the side down. The exposed soils from that cut are, in my opinion, bright uplands soils in the B horizon. We did, I actually have the pictures with me if you want to look at them, but yeah, you, you can put them on the screen, but the, we went to the deepest part of that ponding area, and we augured also in the deepest part, and the first two feet were, in my opinion, at least a six chroma, which for those who don't know, is an upland indicator, and we found groundwater at about approximately two feet groundwater indicators, two feet below the surface of where we were digging, which was two feet below the excavated surface of the adjacent land. So that's four feet down from where the top of the surface used to be when I walked by here prior to any disturbance. So in my opinion, well, obviously in my opinion, well, the wetland line is where it is. Um, it's been upheld by your own peer reviewer, during the ORAD process, the NRAD process, I should say, and it was upheld again by Gary Domain of DEP. And with all the trips that everybody has come in and out of here, not a single person has suggested there was ever an intermittent stream or BVW in any of these areas. How far away, sorry, from, yep. his, from Mr. Garner's proposed area, how far away is where you're saying the wetland ends. Um, What's the what is the distance between? The I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Well, it's it's right around the corner. It's right here. This area right here. Yeah. And, and Steve O'Connell. Um, so as you walk up the trail up the the skinny part of the property, and then you kind of the trail comes very close to this property corner. There's a bound there. And then it you brings you right down into the start of this valley. And that's where the excavation occurred because I was on site witnessing it when it occurred. So that's how far away it is. So this is where Mr. Garner is saying Area 2 is. I'm not sure if his plan accurately illustrates it, but that's the area we're talking about. And you can see the distance from there to the tip of the delineated uh, resource areas approved by DEP. And I also want to add to Mr. Crossman's comments that I was on site with uh, Gary Domain from DEP during the uh, appeal process. And the site conditions that were illustrated in Mr. Garner's report were, were as uh, seen by Mr. Domain as well, including the ponding area uh, in, area, in Area 1. We spent quite a few minutes over there. Janet was on site one of the times. At no point in time did, was there any serious consideration that that was a wetland resource area, state or local. Uh, could we see your pictures? Dave? Yep. <coughs> That's the area where Janet actually lost her boot. Sure. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, this is in the area of Area 1. This is the ex undisturbed ground behind it. And this is the area that where it was excavated. And these are the soil conditions, the natural soil conditions underneath the area that was excavated. Um, it's, at least in my opinion, fairly bright colored, um, indicating an upland soils and right you can't see it but right in here there's a really actually right here there's a really deep hole where they must have really gone down and that's where it, it tends to slope up as you come out of that all the way around so we did some augering in here which I don't really have a picture I have a picture of the sand is so s the soil is so sandy it was so dry that it kept falling off the auger before we could hold it but that would be uh now how far how far down did you go in that area and could that have been just totally mixed up so that it's like they dug a hole put in a pile and took the pile and pushed it back in so maybe further out of that is more representative of uh, well the soil that we dug looks pretty similar to this color here it is I, I understand that where did mr. Gardner regular where did you do your pole, your digging? This, this doesn't really yeah. show uh, the areas that I, I looked in, but I, I was further up in this section here. I didn't, didn't look at this area. Okay. But I do want to clarify that the cut through here means nothing. I'm sorry. Could you please use the microphone? This. Thank you. What I have s suggested to the commission is that this area was uh, excavated. The commission protects man-made excavated areas that are subject to flooding. And whether it's a natural area, which it clearly is not, or whether it was recently excavated during soil testing, is not really germane. And the testing I did through this area also confirmed that, for the most part, the soils I found were 4 to 6 chromo, which are definitely in upland soil. In this front section in here, right along the edge of what appeared to be the flooding area, I did find some modeling beginning in my opinion is that it would not be unlikely over a couple year period to begin to see that turn into uh, uh, wetland soils. But at this point, at this juncture, it's so fresh that okay. it would be very unlikely to find any uh, wetland soils there. So I'm not surprised by anything Dave is saying. That, that okay. Well that's uh, just, you know, so we take, you know, areas one and yeah. two by themselves. And I think it's fair to say, too, that, you know, he notes that Gary Domain was out on the site and didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. Well, Gary is looking for state protected wetlands. DEP does not get involved in local wetland okay. protection. This would not be protected by DEP. This would be protected locally. Okay. We don't want to go into that discussion right. at the moment. I'd rather just have what Dave has found and <laughs> uh, explain in the picture so that we have a better understanding. Go ahead, Dave. You can keep going. That's what we were auguring out of the deepest part of it. But we can go on to the, that's just the side of this, that little hill that was there. This is area two. Um, again, this is the area where they dug, they started excavating all the way out to the 
caught trail for I want for whatever they were doing. I I don't. Once I'm out of there, they <laughs> they go wild out there. But um, this is actually some of the oak trees that were growing here. I would assume they were growing in this area that got knocked over. This area was, this is all oak, black birch, um, up on the hillside. And this was exactly how this looked all through this area when I first came out here to flag the wellings. There was no, none of this had happened when I came out here to walk by the area because the Excuse car me, when you said this was knocked over, knocked over by the weather or knocked over by excavation? I would probably excavation when they dug this out. This, because this was treed. This whole area right here was treed. And the cart road itself comes right through here. So you have to walk by here every single time you come down the site. On the corner of the property is probably over in this general direction. Um, so what you're suggesting, just to kind of clarify, yeah. that would be what um, we're considering area two? This, this area here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what you're suggesting, I think, kind of clear for myself anyway, is you've walked by this before it was cleared. Yes. It never had an issue. No. So now it's cleared, and Mr. Garner's alleging that it's, it should be protected because it's part of an intermittent stream. Right. Well, he's, I believe, and I, I think, or he's saying there's a potential that there was BVW here. Correct. Right. That was disturbed by this work. All right. Okay. okay. I just want to make yeah. sure we're in the same area. Yeah. That's kind of the overbreath of what we're getting at because you, you, you know, you, you state a few times that you, we all walk by it and we didn't notice anything. So I want to make sure we're talking about the same exact spot. Okay. okay. Yep. Um, these are just, it's just a bunch of soils. That's the soil that was growing underneath that tree that where they cut. Through. <coughs> um, uh, yep, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's the trees, some of the trees that they must have pushed out of here when they were um, digging up the place. Um, this is the soils we found in the hole where the water would collect in the, in the springtime when snow melt and everything, plus that ledge, the water runs off there. So what is the restricting factor here? Is it clay, is it silt, or is it ledge at the bottom of all the sandy soil? Um, I don't usually, I don't go that deep. You can't get that deep with an auger, but I would assume that the ledge, considering that they were all looking for ledge, would be the main restriction in here. Mr. Odresco can speak to that because there's a test pit right there. He did a deep observation test pit back in 2007 and the, the soil log, um, I, I have a collection of all the documents that have already been presented to this board, uh, including the soil logs from 2007 and the soil log for the test pit that's right nearby showing the horizons below the surface. Okay. So it's all sand. Mr. Rockwood's also going to speak to depth as an issue. Okay. okay. This, um, the area that was excavated is up in here. And this is a little bit of a natural area right adjacent to where all the rocks are. And the, there is water stained leaves in here. Um, but from a vegetative, excuse me, vegetative standpoint, um, there's a red maple sapling right here. And there's another one just to the right of this picture. All the other vegetation in this area is upland vegetation. Um, you have white oak. Um, the shrubs are all black huckleberry. There's a lot of young sassafras growing up in here and little white pines. <coughs> so from a vegetative standpoint, it was not, in my opinion, a vegetated wetland. It's not that big of an area, too. It's probably the inside of the desk area right there. This is just down adjacent to it as you head away from the hole that was excavated. Uh, there's actually very little growing right in here, but all the trees around here are oak. Uh, there's a lot of, these are a lot of sassafras. It seems to, they seem to like that particular area, but this sassafras right here. Um, 
and there's a lot of oak seedlings in this area. Mr. Crossman, can you just clarify what direction? Uh, my understanding is you're looking down gradient towards the BVW that was delineated yeah, here. The BVW would be the 400 feet this way. So Mr. Garner's saying that that's a stream in front of you? I, not this particular area right here. I think this is more of a, an area where water sits right for the, but the next picture would show that. Well, not the next picture. <laughs> or the next picture. Um, this is the start of what looks like it could be a stream channel, with the exception that there's no defined channel, meaning there's no bank on this. There's no water. There are no leaves that are pushed up in this whole little area. Actually, if you could go to the next one. And this continues in this general direction from I've that first picture was right under all this stuff here. But this continues down in this general direction. Um, it's not defined by definition of a stream channel in the regulations. Um, there's no bank. There's no surf. There's actually no surface scouring. There's no leaves were pushed up along here, and the wetland that we're talking about is in this direction down here. Uh, this actually ev eventually goes back uphill, and you can follow this little trail up into here. <coughs> um, and it appears to me that it's either a very old footpath or a deer trail that runs right through there. But there's no indication that water flows forcibly, forci well, forcibly through this area. I think the rest of these are just, it's all upland vegetation. That's pretty much, you can't really see much of anything with the rest of the pictures. It was just. May we have copies of these? Sure. Okay. You can download that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think when we get to the end, I have some of the uh, tests. Yeah, right here. If you go back, back, go back. This is the test bit that's in the cart road. And there's the pipe that Mr. Driscoll left behind when they, they performed that test pit. But this is the cart path itself as you come right through here, right around. You come right around there and walk this way as you go around the outside perimeter of the property. There's actually another s smaller trail that cuts up this way on the <coughs> inside, but most, most people come down that way because it's easier to walk. Excuse me, where roughly on the site is this? Area 2. Area this two. Area two. Oh, area 2. Right okay. the, area, the area that's dug out is right in here. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we have the soil log from that test pit, and Mr. O'Driscoll can confirm that. Unless you have anything further, Mr. Crossman, I thank you. Thank for you. Coming in. And uh, so with that, I'm going to quickly turn it over uh, to Mr. O'Driscoll, who was on the site back in 2007, again, doing soil testing throughout these areas, disturbing soil. Um, and he previously delineated uh, that plan that was presented to this commission uh, as evidence of the wetlands that Mr. Garner is claiming. When you had that hearing back in April of 2018, there was a plan submitted. It didn't show a stream. It didn't show BVW upland of the BVW that was delineated. But evidently, that was presented as evidence of additional wetland resources, which I've struggled with since I saw that video. Okay. But in any event, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. O'Driscoll, who can just describe quickly what he witnessed back in 2007 and his understanding of the site. And then with, after that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rockwood just to discuss the means and methods employed by Mr. Garner. Uh, good evening. My name is Daniel O'Driscoll. I'm a professional land surveyor a certified soil evaluator. Um, I did extensive soil testing on this site in 2007, but also on September 12th of 2006, we also did some testing to verify the um, soils for drainage purposes. The <coughs> I was working for a, um, a group that was interested in buying both the Axberg and Pimentel property. We went through I don't believe our plans were ever submitted to conservation, but we did do a delineation, we did do a concept plan, and we approached conservation informally, asking if we could 
do some testing completely outside the 100 foot buffer zone. So with the blessing of the commission, we went out and, and did, <coughs> did our testing. Uh, I don't have any slides, but if, the, if, if you could put back maybe that um, picture that showed those areas in the topography. The test, the test pit, the pipe. Oh, with pipe. the test pipe? Yeah, sure, let's see and I'll, I'll try to explain uh, a little bit about that. I just pulled the drive out. So that, that's so when we did the testing on this site, we did enter the site from Seekonk Street. The excavator kind of followed a little path, but had to make a little wider path to get his machine up there. At the time, uh, we didn't recognize any wetland at Area 1. We did not recognize a uh, wetland at Area 2. Um, what we time of year was that? Uh, we did the test on September the 12th, 2006. Okay, that's a September one, okay. Um, being well versed in wetlands, I certainly wouldn't have tested for a detention pond possible area right near a wetland. So this pipe that's shown right here is our monitor well we put in that hole on September 12th, 2006. Uh, we did not find hydric soils. It was all upland soils. We found redox, which is um, like signs of modeling seasonal high groundwater, at 42 inches below the surface. And we dug the hole to 132 feet without hitting ledge. Inches, I'm sorry. 132 <laughs> inches without hitting ledge. Um, th the soil colors were very similar to uh, <coughs> Mr. Crossman's slideshow uh, in your augering and on the side of that hill. So, um, so basically, when I was there in 2006, 2007, th these excavations weren't here, and, and, and we didn't, you know, recognize any of it as a wetland area. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just also, could you just describe briefly uh, some of the clearing that you did? Because it's been alleged that Mr. Garner had cleared a major portion of the site. We settled that when we showed Mr. O'Hart. I'm sorry, Mr. O'Hart cleared a major portion of the site. We settled that case with the zoning board when we showed aerial photography showing that the bulk of the disturbance happened back in 2006. So could you just describe what you did? Because I know, um, you know, there's been allegations that this is a dirt road that was built. All right. Mr. O'Hart knew that he was going to get additional soil testing over there, so he smoothed out these areas to allow equipment to go up onto mm -hmm. the site. That's all that was done, and Mass Housing directed him to do that. All right, so uh, just describe some of the clearing. Sure. So, so the clearing that was done was so the excavator could get access to the property. It was a track excavator, and it was, you know, we picked and moved through trees and around trees to try to do as little disturbance <coughs> as possible. But I'm saying, you know, the width of the track, it may have been 12 to 15 feet wide in some spots. But it was, you know, basically just a road for him to get in. Then, so then when we got into the areas we wanted to test, we simply went off the trail a little bit and dug our holes and then moved on. Okay. Thank you. So you've heard extensive testimony about the condition of the site prior to any of these alleged disturbances. Um, now, I'd also like to introduce Dr. John Rockwood, um, again, a PhD in, in soils and plant science, um, who is, he has not been on the site, but he is going to critique both the means that were employed by Mr. Garner to investigate these alleged disturbances and the conclusions that he reached in his report. So with that, uh, Dr. Rockwood. Basically, my name is Dr. John Rockwood. I'm a chief environmental scientist with EchoTech. I was hired four days ago to simply conduct a peer review of the Garner report. And what I looked at was 
He claims that the DEP methodology for delineating BVW for the soil evaluations was how these borings and whatever were conducted. And he describes the soils and he claims that the criteria within that document demonstrate that these soils are hydric soils. I strongly disagree with that conclusion. Um, his report um, indicates that eight borings were made with a two inch hand auger to depths of up to 23 inches from the ground surface. Um, five of these borings are within the area with the gravel and sand fill. One area is proximate to the um, stream that he's identified and two were located next to the seasonally ponded area. Um, despite the lack of fill at three of these boring locations, he, s he describes the profiles as very similar. So these areas have nine to 13 inches of sandy gravelly fill. Um, these areas aren't identified as an area with fill. So how can the profiles be the same? Um, I'll get to some other comments about the profiles as well. Um, he describes the soils as, again, 9 to 13 inches of bright sand gravel over a 4 to 6 inch thick organic layer, which he designated as an OE horizon, um, with colors of 10YR31 and 32. The horizon beneath the organic layer was described as a mineral soil with a fine sandy loam texture and colors between um, 10YR22 with greater than 10% redoxymorphic features to 10, 10, uh, 10YR31 with less than 10%. The thickness of the A horizon was not described. The redoxymorphic features were not described. And the B horizon was not mentioned or described. The B horizon would be the layer below the A horizon. Um, the figure on page 7 shows a selected photograph on an auger containing soil. The caption explains the bright soil noted as residue from the top fill layer. That's entirely possible when you use an auger to do test borings. I'll get to that again in a minute. Um, the report on page 7 states that the coloration of the A horizon is indicative of hydric soils, and he references the 95 DEP guidance to support that conclusion. That's a false conclusion. Why is that? I'll get into that. Okay. Um, the soil in photograph 8, uh, in figure 8 and page 8, is not described in the report text. It's not visually consistent with the generalized soil profile on page 7 of the report. Um, soil, bore, soil profiles for all of these borings he did are not provided in the report. There's simply a generalized statement of it's this thick, this thick, this thick, and these colors. For each of these borings, there should have been a profile done starting at the surface with the colors, textures, descriptions, presence of groundwater saturation. When you got to the bottom of the fill layer, there should have been some vegetative matter on top of the organic matter. There should have been a detailed description with photographs for each of these eight borings. We have none of that information. We simply have two colors for, from, for two different layers. That's all we got. So while the methodology in the DEP guidance is sound, it should be used for soil evaluations for the determination of BBW boundaries. These were not correctly used or applied, and the conclusions are flawed. I'll get into that um, below. Um, there's major concerns um, with the procedures used. The profiles are generalized. <coughs> individual profiles are not provided. And the conclusions based on the incomplete and inadequate soil descriptions. The concerns are as follows. Only one or two soil profiles are partly described in the text of the report. They're not photo and, uh, or photo documented. Page 9 indicates that the borings are photo documented and logged. That material wasn't provided. Um, all eight should have been documented in a soil profile excavated by spade, not auger. And I'll get into that later, too. Um, in a disturbed area, you really want to use a soil spade to dig a proper soil test pit because the augering mixes the soil as it goes in. An auger is great for routine wetland delineations, but in a disturbed area, or if there's a disputed area, you want to dig a one foot, one foot by one foot hole as deep as you need to go to evaluate the soil as necessary. And that was not done here. Again, they should have been, uh, there should have been a soil profile for each of these borings. Um, broken down by horizon, depth, soil texture, soil color, soil features, with the necessary photographs. Not a single complete profile was provided. So it's difficult to evaluate. 
However, um, based upon what was provided, um, basically, the described soils have an oil horizon that's six inches thick at most. The 1995 DEP guidance, page 32, number 10, indicates that if the oil horizon is less than eight inches thick, the soil colors within 20 inches of the mineral soil surface or just below the A horizon, which is the B horizon, which isn't described here, need to be evaluated to determine whether so hydric soil indicators exist. That just wasn't done here. Um, and basically, the soil uh, hydric soil indicators are on page 29 of the 1995 DEP guidance. And I'll go through all those in detail below. And page 33, number 11 says, if oxidized rhizospheres within the A horizon together with low chroma colors right below the A horizon are indicators of hydric soil. It doesn't call out oxidized rhizospheres in the uh, A horizon, but that also says you need to look at the B horizon. That's the point that this is in here. The B horizon is critical. Unless you have an organic layer that's 8 inches thick to 16 inches thick or thicker, you have to look at the B horizon. You cannot make a hydric soil determination based upon a partial soil description of just the A horizon. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. So the things that you're saying that are missing from Mr. Garner's report, yes. um, it's my understanding based on Mr. Garner's recommendations that he made today were that a further investigation into the site was supposed to have been made. Thank you. And That's exactly I correct. That he wasn't making any conclusions. So what you're saying is that he was making conclusions based on his investigation of the site. If you could please just let me finish. Um, that he, you're saying that he was making conclusions based on the investigation that he did at the site. But what my understanding, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Garner, is that he wasn't making any conclusions. He was just recommending that further investigation, which I imagine would have more extensive um, soil testing, such as what you're describing, would have been done at the site at a later date? Is yeah, I had, I had limited time, and I was very clear in my presentation that I found enough information and enough evidence to warrant a detailed investigation. It would be similar to what John's recommending, but I didn't have that uh, uh, time on my hands to do it. I hadn't been asked by the board to do it, and we're talking probably several days of uh, investigation. I, th I came across enough information and evidence with what I did do to be able to recommend that a further third-party investigation be done. Uh, and that's the extent of what I did. And I was very careful to say that I did not reach conclusions that this had been a wetland, but that there was enough evidence that it may have been and that it therefore okay. warrants further investigation. Okay. Thank you. What he did conclude is that these are hydric soils. He did make that conclusion. That's pretty clear. That's incorrect. And that's incorrect. That's well, I, the I conclusion I'm questioning. Yeah, for hydrosols, I'm well, you haven't been on the site, have you? I've, I've read your report. Have you been on the site? Um, the attorney indicated I haven't been no, on the so site. He said he's strictly opining as to the methodology that was used. Number one, you, you spent the time and money to go to court to get a warrant for Mr. Garner to go on site, okay? He went out there alone, unannounced. He yeah. had the whole day to spend looking for wetlands wherever he wanted. And, and uh, he could have done that. He went out there with an auger. The DEP requires a spade, OK, if you're going to do this type of investigation. He concluded that hydric soils existed. He gave the board photos of it. And he's saying that there likely was a BVW in that area based on what he observed. All right? And he wants to get paid to go back out there and do more investigation. The information that he's given this board so far does not warrant further investigation because it wasn't done correctly in the first instance and it doesn't reveal hydric soils in the location that he's claiming in the second instance. Okay. Right? Can read, read his conclusions. Okay. okay. So this cannot go on forever. Right. Oh, I, so I agree. I think we all agree. If there were hydric soils out there, he should have done it at that point. <clears throat> and then basically, I, I went through the various hydric soil indicators on page 29 of the DEP manual. Basically, the soils are not histosols or histocapitans. Basically, they're not organic layers 8 to 16 inches thick or more. So that's a hydric soil indicator. The organic layer out there is actually an OE, according to Mr. Garner. An OA, which is a sapric organic soil, is a hydric indicator. But again, it has to be the appropriate thickness. An OE, which is a hemic 
soil <coughs> isn't necessarily a hydric soil indicator unless there's other features involved. Um, then the next one is soils within 12 inches of the bottom of the O horizon do not have a matrix chroma of 0 or 1 or a value of 4 or higher. You're not going to find a value of 4 or higher in a topsoil, which is a horizon. So the soils don't qualify under that criteria because those <coughs> are again 2, 2, and 3, 1. So you don't have a 4. Soils within 12 inches of the bottom of the O horizon do not have a chroma 2 or less and a value of 4 or higher in the matrix and models with a chroma of 3 or higher. Again, we don't, we're no, don't have the B horizon. We don't know if the B horizon ha meets that criteria. And again, the redoxymorphic features are undescribed, so we don't know whether they're low chroma modeling or high chroma <coughs> modeling. That becomes important in the next one. Soils within 12 inches of the bottom of the O horizon do not have a matrix chroma of 3 and a value of 4 or higher with 10% or more low chroma models. So they're undescribed, so we don't know if they're that. But again, we're missing the four value. Everything's three or less. So they can't be hydric soils based upon the DEP guidance, based upon the information that has been provided. And again, DEP guidance, page 32, number five, indicates that soil test pits should be excavated with a pointed spade. Um, soil mm -hmm. augers are fine for routine delineations and exploration. But again, if you're going to be in a disputed area, and you're going to make allegations that wetlands exist or may exist in an area, you really need to follow the procedures you say you're following. And um, basically, you can't really draw conclusions on incomplete data. That's really all I'm going to say about okay. this at this point. Can we put the SORAD plan up for a second, though? I am going to yes. comment on something else. Earlier, Mr. Garner indicated that DEP isn't in a habit of identifying <coughs> local or federal resources. Well, DEP did just that as part of their May to, uh, site visit when they went back out there. Can we blow up this section? Up here. Over here, there's an isolated vegetated wetland, which is too small for DEP to regulate, that re they required to be flagged and shown on the SORAD plan. They identified in their cover letter, and it's identified in the plan. It's uh, delineated with flags A through E. That's an isolated vegetated wetland, again, too small to be regulated by the state. And um, DEP called, the, the important point here is DEP called this an isolated vegetated wetland. Mr. Garner's alleging a stream comes down in this direction, flows through here and into this wetland. <coughs> if there was a stream there, and DEP clearly looked at this area in great detail, they isolated a vegetated wetland from the BBW. They didn't connect it with a stream to the wetland. So, a regulator from DEP looked at this area in enough detail to require an isolated vegetated wetland to be flagged, and they didn't connect it to the BBW of the stream, which is alleged to flow through this area. Mm. That's a very important point. DEP is an independent party. They looked at this, and they don't think there's a stream here. And now I'm going to turn it back over. That's all I have. Thank you, Dr. Rockwood. Thank you. <coughs> so as I mentioned, Mr. Chairman, the initial investigation was triggered by incomplete and inaccurate analysis of water puddling in the month of February, okay, which triggered this entire episode following that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was triggered at the zoning board, and then from there, the water yeah. puddling. Okay. Um, from there now, apparently, we're being told that we need further investigation, again, based on inaccurate information. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Well, it's a recommendation, but we have so that's, that's the concern. If there's any idea that, you know, this just requires further investigation, that's what got us here in the first place, okay, mm -hmm. which is critical. And again, this was all looked at, all right? Um, at this point, you've heard the conditions on the site prior to any disturbance. You've heard an evaluation of the, eva of the uh, inspection that you ordered, okay, uh, and he went out there to identify accurately identify the wetland resources within areas of possible alteration. That was his charge, okay? Mm -hmm. Now he's saying he has to go back out and do more work to, to make a conclusion there. That, that wasn't within his scope. So um, having heard that, all right, uh, at this point we haven't heard anything from this board, okay? As I mentioned initially, uh, you heard testimony from Attorney Pyle saying there's a stream on site you should go investigate. All right, Janet DeLonga was not at that, at that hearing. You have a conservation agent, all right? You were on the board at that time. Mr. Wilson, you were on the board at that time, 
All right? You've all read Mr. Norton's letter mm -hmm. at this point, saying that Mr. Garner's report was not credible. He's received no credible in information to require an investigation. Right? That was his opinion, not the board's. Well, at this point, okay, maybe we hear from Janet DeLonga as to what she observed on site at the time, having walked up and down that trail, okay? Um, I have Dr. Rockwood's report. I have all the information that we've submitted to okay. the board today to submit for the administrative record if the board decides to take some action. Okay. Obviously. Now, I think we'd like to have it so we can read it and go through it and make sure of the facts, that we have all the facts and that things haven't been left out for this board internally. Okay. And I do have one question. I do agree with you that the spade is by far the better way to go in one foot hole in any area, especially when you're trying to determine if you're mapping soils in an area, because a lot of times, what do they do? They, you get a guy that's walking through a county and he's looking at the forested cover, rock outcroppings, and then digs a few holes randomly and says, well, this is pretty much how the soil's going to go throughout, and that's how the soil surveys were done years ago. So we kind of use that as an idea. So when you come to an area like this, my main question is, at any time, did anyone do the proper spade to maybe <coughs> 24 to 36 inches in the area that's in question and 15 or 20 feet up and down from what alleges is a, is, is a river or um, an intermittent stream and on the sides upland to see, to match, to see if in that disturbed area there is the soil is so disturbed that it doesn't match anything in, in circling it. So that when we do test that area, as you could attest, it's not going to match anything around it. So it's not the soil that you identified in that mixed area would come under another class. So that's wait, wait, that's that one question that just real it's, crystals, it's S pit is twelve feet. Okay. So uh, the so, from so you have the horizons for those it's hundred all the way down to 132 inches deep. Okay. They, okay. Were, going, they were going to put a they were going to put a detention base in there. Okay. No, I understand that. So in that area we have that. Did anybody med do any like spade tests 20 feet on either side of where you had your test pit to see if that area matched the same? Or is no, it just that no, one pit? There's no cause to do that because there's undisturbed no, just, soil there. No, I I understand that. I, I'm just asking a question if it were done. That's all. I don't I don't think it was done. It didn't need to be done because it's all it's upland vegetation. No okay. Okay. No, no, I'm just never, asking because we've got right. someone who did several pit several auger borings all around it. I'm just asking if someone else had done something similar in the past, other than the one hole that you that was that's gonna be well documented as far as the stratus of the soil. That's all. Uh, Pat. So may I have the floor for a moment? Yeah. Okay, so a lot's gone down here and a lot of things have been said. Uh, I will try to sort of uh, cover the things I, I at least remember. Uh, could you get my plan back up that we've all been referring to that shows area two? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, the one I said you. Yeah, that, that works, that works. Uh, and if you could blow up this area right here. Actually, let's, let's go further down to the sketch that I showed. I think it's um, maybe figure eight or nine, maybe 10. A little farther, there you are. Back up, there you are, and blow that up a little bit. Okay, first of all, the um, PVC pipe that we keep referring to is right up about here, right about there. So it's outside of that area, you know it is. No, it's, still there. It's, it certainly is. That's going to be my position. It's up in here. It was not down in the area that I've crosshatched as being essentially disturbed. Did you, did you, did you make in the test pits? Are you, you going to say on the 29th of May? Oh. And you were, he has the floor, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So I'd, I'd like to go on with that, the interruption, if I can. Okay, <coughs> no, okay, okay, please stop. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. You lied 12 times okay. during this presentation. Okay, and please. I didn't interrupt you. Okay, Pat, finish up. Okay, so uh, in fact, Mr. Hart accused me of alleging that he had put that pipe in uh, in my report to the uh, zoning board back in 2018, and that in fact was not something I had ever said, but that has been there ever since I've seen the site. 
Uh, and we have testimony that that goes back to 2007 when the deep holes were done. So in reality, this road that came through here was put in in 2007. It was brought down and it goes up. I don't know whether this road connected at the time. It looks to me like it was old. So I think we're looking at dirt roads that go back um, over a decade at least. Yeah. And, and we've had testimony that Mr. O'Hart's excavator opened these up and widened them a little bit for his equipment and that sort of thing. So I think if this were a wetland area, I think it was disturbed back in 2007. And then it was again freshly disturbed and by disturbed, <coughs> I mean some soil was scraped over it, perhaps with the blade of a machine or the bucket of the excavator, because this was very fresh through this area. And in relationship to my sketch, this PVC pipe I'm talking about was right up in here, particularly in relationship to these two test pits I did up in here. It wasn't, it goes uphill pretty steeply through here, so it was right in the middle of a flat. Okay. Um, area one. Um, we've heard that in 2007 uh, it wasn't observed to be a wetland. It wouldn't have been because it was excavated uh, sometime in the last year or two, clearly. Uh, when I saw it in 2018, it was freshly excavated. When I saw it in 2019, it began to show some, some vegetation coming through. Um, Dave Crossman testified at length about the vegetation in this uh, stream area right here as being um, upland vegetation. I totally agree that I, I didn't find any evidence of any um, wetland vegetation along this channel, uh, but I haven't said that I did. I said simply that this was a stream channel that was connecting to an area that may have been a wetland at one point. Okay. Uh, so I want to I want to clarify that um, there was a, a tremendous amount of pictures that we looked at of oaks and sassafras, and uh, none of that's germane to to the. Uh, observations I made, uh, and th th it's just just n noise. Um, so, <coughs> essentially, what I have said is that, um, and I'm not trying to get further work by any means. I mm -hmm. hope that I don't see the site again. <laughs> uh, and I'm recommending to you that you find an objective third party uh, peer reviewer who's highly regarded who can come in and make these observations uh, objectively and. and it would be perfectly fine if they wanted if they wanted to be accompanied by somebody from O'Hart's team. That would be totally normal uh, and highly recommended. My point was simply that I found enough in here that I was concerned that it may have been the stream. I identified. Um, can we go back to the sorad? I know I have you jumping all over. No, no, anyway. that's okay. Okay, that works. And and let's go down a little bit if we can. Uh, no, you're going up. Okay. Go okay. the other direction. There you go. So, well, go, go back down a little. <laughs> Good, stay right there. Okay, so the, the way I had initially identified this area in 2018 was that I went out on the site in February, and I, had, I quickly wanted to confirm the Crossman <coughs> delineation. So I walked the entirety of what he had flagged. The wetland flags were all there. They were all very evident. And there was a stream flowing right here. And I went, huh. And I thought, well, I wonder if there are any wetland areas that the stream connects to. So I slowly walked my way completely up here and up into this area. And uh, I found no adjoining wetlands to the stream itself. Everything was upland vegetation. But as I walked up the stream, I hit this area of fill beside the road and made a note in my report to the zoning board in 2018 that it was very odd that there was an abrupt cut of the stream and that what was underneath that was not something <coughs> that I could make a determination about. Uh, and I recommended at that point that somebody, and I wasn't recommending I go back out and do that, somebody take a look at that and make a decision about whether or not it was uh, a wetland area. Okay. So th th the stream is actually very, if, y if you know how to read contours, it's very obvious. It, the contours just lead you right up exactly where it goes. And it's, uh, it's very ephemeral, I'm sure. It, it may flow a couple of weeks a year. It may flow a month or two a year. I don't know. I've been out on the site twice. First time I was at it was flowing uh, probably at, I'm going to guess, one to two CFS cubic feet per second. It's not a fast flowing stream by any means. It wallowed out. There was, there was <laughs> sort of a flat area up in here where there was no definable bank. That doesn't mean a thing. There was water connecting all the way up through this area into that, that area that was filled. Okay. 
So that <coughs> that's sort of where I went. And okay. again, you know, I'm sort of my my findings are being attacked as being con conclusions. I've been very clear that they're not, and that I recommend for their for their investigation. Okay. Thank you, Janet. You want to? No. <coughs> <laughs> No, but this is good for the, I think, hopefully, for the different parties to cover information, address concerns, and where do we go from here? Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I didn't know about the 2007 stuff that was done before. I don't think they came to conservation. So, you know, you're hearing stuff, but you can't compare it to anything or say, oh, yeah, they talked about this and this is what they thought. So. Yeah, we have to go back in the files, I believe. Jan? Oh, comments from the well, I'd like to have Dan comment first, and then we'll have uh, the audience. Dan? Yeah, I, had, I actually had some questions, if yes. you don't mind, because we heard a lot of testimony yep. and um, there's some gaps in information. So, uh, Amy, did you get my email? I sent you uh, an email with two attachments. I, can you log in? Yes, I can. Was okay. That, was that late this afternoon? No, just now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> what is your password, Amy? Never. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. I don't want to sit next to you anymore. <laughs> I can't see that. Is that the one you wanted? Yeah. Can you, uh, <clears throat> can you actually open that other, other plan that you had yeah. up? Okay, so, which one do you want? The first one, the other attachment. Yep. Okay, so, so this is the O'Driscoll plan that was referred to. Um, uh, that was prepared in 2006 or 2007, and uh, since Mr. O'Driscoll, it's O'Driscoll, right? That's correct. And since he's here, can I just ask you, yes. are you the one who delineated this wetland that's shown on this plan? Yes, it is. You are? Yes. Okay, and, and are you a professional wetland scientist? Professional wetland scientist, no. No. So are, are you competent to delineate wetlands? For this project, it was, it was delineated as a concept plan, and then it was going to go, once we got the concept worked out, it was going to go to delineation. This was done as a preliminary uh, evaluation to. Um, Can you actually use the microphone? I'm sorry. No. It's, it's being recorded. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, we I did the delineation on that as as. It, but it never went to conservation, it never went to an ANRAD, never okay. went to an ORAD, et cetera. Okay, no, I, the only reason I ask is because Mr. Agostino has been making accusations tonight that someone who's not a certified professional wetland scientist is not competent to, to opine on, on these kind of issues. So I, I just want to ask you, since you're the one who delineated this wetland, whether or not you're a certified wetland scientist. But you, 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 you answer my question. Um, so when you did, you also, you also made some statements tonight about how you didn't see wetlands in the area of, of area two. And that area two is actually shown on this plan as d detention pond number two, is that right? Where that test little marker is. Yeah, but you actually s you have a circle there that says detention pond number two. Exactly. Can you just explain what that is? It was a, a test in a potential area to become a detention pond or a way to store drainage runoff. Okay, and you, d you testified that there wasn't any wetlands in that area when, when you surveyed the site, right? Yes. Okay. But your, ac your plan of this wetland finger actually shows a lot more extensive wetlands than are, sh than are shown on the plan that was approved by DEP, right? I didn't compare the two. Okay. Well, if we, we could compare the two. And in fact, this wetland finger goes further uh, in, in the westerly direction. Dan, where did this drawing line. come from? This is the 06 07 O'Driscoll plan okay. that was prepared, okay. which was referenced tonight. Okay. Okay, so do you have any explanation for why? I mean, have you seen the current, ANRA, the current SORAD plan that was approved? Just on the screen and okay. tonight and one okay. time before on the email. Okay. But All right. So just so I understand then, um, 
that detention pond area, that, that actually wasn't cleared by your clients in 06 and 07, right? That's correct. So what you did is you just stuck a pipe in there, you, you did a test bit, but you didn't clear that entire area. That's correct. Okay. So what, let me ask, um, let me ask Mr. Agostino a question. Can we go to the other plan that I sent to you? Yeah, the other attachment. Yeah, and then scroll down to the next page. Okay, good. So this is the existing condition plan that was filed by the applicant to the zoning board. And this plan shows the areas of the test pits that Mr. Agostino was referring to. And so, Mr. Agostino, you were, you were saying that this whole investigation had to do with site clearing work uh, that, was, that was concurrent with soil testing. And you, you kept saying that, that this is all about soil testing and therefore it should have, all this controversy should be before the zoning board, not the Conservation Commission, because this has to do with soil testing that was directed by mass housing, in, in your words. Um, did your client actually do any soil testing in Area 2? Yes. Or are you only referring to the pipe that was put in there in, in 2006 or 7? Yes, he did soil test in Area 2. He dug that large hole that was photographed with water in it to determine the extent of ledge. The statement that was made earlier that Mr. O'Hart said he put that pipe in, that was inaccurate. Mr. O'Hart told Mr. Garner What that statement he, is that? Mr. Garner just said that Mr. O'Hart put that pipe in. I don't did think you not say that? I don't that think Mr. O'Hart told the zoning board that I had claimed that he had put it in. And I made no reference to who put it in. It was existing when I first walked on the site in 2018. I don't know who put it in. It could have been put in 30 years ago. I didn't, I haven't formed an opinion about that at all. Your report, okay, if you read it, and, and these are just words on the page, all right, and they're open for interpretation. So to say that I've lied 12 times tonight is really deeply concerning, all right? Well, we can if get into the, the words. No text. Let's just yeah, they're already the words. Facts. So if you read the words in Mr. Garner's first report, okay, he talks extensively about Title V soil testing. This and then is the ZBA report. This is the ZBA report, and then references that pipe. All right, so as a reader, I interpreted that to mean that he associated that pipe with recent Title V excavation. You have right? no reason to reach that conclusion well, at all. I'm sorry. I, okay. You know, I, okay, we're not going to debate it. Okay. But okay. in any event, yes, back. my client did do excavation in that area. The, the, if you put up Mr. Garner's um, uh, plan showing where he did his test pits, you can see the recent excavation that he did. Um, if the statement Mr. O'Driscoll just made about didn't clear that area in 2006, 2007, are you when you say you didn't clear that area, are you certain about that statement? Yeah, because when we did the testing, the, when we did the testing, the road heading to the south wasn't there. We, our road came in on the high end and kept going over towards Gil Axberg's property. Right. So, the, sorry, the area of the soil test pit. Okay. The the photos don't lie, and this is what we had presented to the uh, ZBA at the time. All right. There are historic aerial photographs that show 2005, 2006, a complete canopy. All right. The, the down gradient uh, path was cut by Mr. Garner, correct? The no, no, not Mr. I'm sorry, Garner. Uh, Mr. O'Hart, okay? The down gradient path was cut by Mr. O'Hart. The up gradient path was the existing path. The clearing, that's the obvious clearing, is in the area of that test pipe, all right? So if you look at the photos from 2004, 5, it shows a complete canopy there. When you get to 2007, 8, you can see flash, there's a hole in the canopy. All right, well before Mr. O'Hart ever entered the property. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what cross-examination Dan's trying to uh, establish here, but these are photographs, documents. You can evaluate them for yourselves, all right? Uh, but my client did excavation in that area. Feel free to interrupt me. But what's the okay. question? Dan, all right, so, so my question was, did your client clear the area or do any excavation in the area of Area 2, which is shown in this shown on the prior plan as detention pond to, and I believe you said yes, he did, to, yes, to he look did, for yeah. a ledge. Yes. But there's no test pit there because that test pit is actually not shown in this plan, right? Yeah. No, that's not area two. No. Yes, it is. No, hold on. That, is no, that area no, no. two? It's probably the one below it. It's, I thought area that's two farther was out. Steve, yeah. that's farther out. Hold on, hold on. Dan's correct. Dan's correct. Dan's correct. All right. 
there's no test pit there, right? No, because there was a test pit there from 2007 that we had the soil log to showing sand in that area. So the only excavation that we made in that area, all right, and I'll say we, you can string me up as well, all right, I wasn't even involved at the time, yeah. but the excavation there was to determine ledge, okay, okay, because there were all these allegations of ledge. All right, and if you look at the Garner report, he says never in 25 years has he seen Title V test pits like that. They weren't Title V test pits. They were excavation to determine the extent of ledge on the site because that was a concern that was articulated yeah. by the town. So what are we okay. getting at, Dan? Okay, no, I'm just, just you, clarifying. You're, you're acting as if I'm making you an argument. You call me a liar. Okay, okay, you call wait, me a liar. Please, like 12 please, times please Chris. Let's that concerns me, Mr. Chairman. I know, right? I understand. allow that at your meeting? I understand. No, we don't. Okay, so I, I want to correct a few things. Let's clarify, so yes. I'm going to correct a few things for the record that were misstated. Um, first of all, the zoning board uh, determination was a zoning enforcement matter in which the zoning board made a finding that the zoning bylaw was violated. The zoning bylaw provision that was violated was that clearing was done in excess of what was necessary for due diligence activities. That was a decision that was made by the zoning board that was not appealed by the applicant so that that was misstated by Mr. Agassiz. No, I no, know. I've got. We've read We're that. Correcting the right. record. The decision set. Well, whatever. That's not a correction. I don't know where you're getting that from. All right. I got a call I from Dave DeLuca, counsel for the ZBA, saying that the ZBA was ready to move on. I got a call from the chairman of the zoning board. Yeah. I believe he's in the room. He phoned me, and said we want to move forward. Little did I know they were meeting that afternoon with Lorraine Sweeney. Mm -hmm. and directing this to go to the CONCOM and continue that fight. Had I known that at the time, I never would have settled <coughs> it. Okay. I never would have recommended well, that he okay. walk into if that trap. Yeah, one speaker okay. at a time, and then if you have any, anything to address after. Okay. Once he's Dan, done, you can, yeah. okay. we'll hear all of those comments. Uh, just Thank a few you. more corrections. Um, when Mr. Caliza was at a meeting of uh, the Conservation Commission uh, and, and made an off-color statement, he did not say that the genesis of this investigation was to reduce the density of the project. He didn't, simply did not say that, and that was attributed to Mr. Agostino. What Calisa are the videotapes? Sorry. By yeah. Mr. Agostino. Okay. Just just that was um, I remember Ms. it was, I um, don't mean to, it was more to the effect of the decision that we made would affect the scope of the 40B. That's exactly. what he stated. And that's when I said exactly what I've said before, is that that is none of our concern. And that, you know, it, it, is, it was not appropriate, an appropriate place to state something like that. That's all. Okay, Dan. Okay. Um, Mr. Agostino stated that the standing order in the industry would not to let Mr. Garner on the site. Um, Mr. Garner can speak if he wants to on the 2018 allegation. I, I've read it. It, it, had to, it was a spite retaliatory allegation made by somebody who didn't like the findings that Mr. Garner made. Um, Mr. Garner was not punished. Um, there was a, disp a consent order disposition that did not suspend his license. So that statement was incorrect. There was nothing that precluded Mr. Garner from continuing working as a professional land surveyor, and that was the, the board that reviewed that complaint. Um, and um, just look at my notes here. I want to make sure I got everything. And, and, and with respect to the trespassing allegations, um, the zoning board hired Mr. Garner in order to corroborate or dispute Mr. Bullock's findings. So Mr. Bullock made a finding that there was in a, a violation of the zoning bylaw by extensive clearing of the site. Mr. Garner was hired to give the applicant the benefit of the doubt, not just take Mr. Bullock's word for it. So now that's being flipped to basically accuse Mr. Garner of some nefarious action. That was not the point. The applicant knew that there was going to be an independent review of Mr. Bullock's allegations, and that was what, what happened in that circumstance. And with respect to the, the warrant, um, Mr. Agostino is saying that that this issue is not properly before the Conservation Commission because we have a pending Chapter 40B application. <coughs> um, those arguments were made to the district court judge in Rentham, um, and they were rejected. The, Mr. Agostino didn't mention that he filed a motion to quash the subpoena that was served on the applicant in which enabled Mr. Garner to go on the property. That motion to quash was denied. Mr. Agostino then filed an appeal of that motion to quash with the appellate division of the district court, and then Mr. Agostino withdrew that appeal uh, last month, I believe, 
um, I wasn't served any notice of it, but I, my, my understanding was that he that that's been withdrawn. So that issue has already been argued and, and rejected, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Mr. <coughs> the, the district court judge, the district court magistrate issued the warrant in the first place based upon an affidavit, and then a judge evaluated it after the fact and determined that it was fine. And then finally, with respect to what a SORAD does and an ORAD does, the SORAD does not make binding determinations on local resource areas. So that, that goes to what Dr. Rockwood stated. Um, DEP, I spoke to the DEP analyst um, back in, I think, May, just to confirm what they saw, what they were doing on the site. Uh, and, and they told me specifically <coughs> that they were not making determinations on local bylaw areas that that would be up to the commission, that they told the commission that fact at that time. Um, so they did not determine that there was no stream. No one was asked to look at a stream. Um, and the fact that the isolated vegetated wetland was put on the plan doesn't mean that this is all encompassing on all local resource areas on the site. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I'll take um, questions from the audience. Great, uh, take a microphone, please identify yourself. Lorraine Sweeney, 14 Stop River Road. Um, I'm a direct abutter to the property and familiar with um, both the ANRAD and much of the history regarding it. Um, as Chris said earlier tonight, the timeline's important, dating back to 2006, 2007. Um, Mr. O'Driscoll uh, testified this evening that he did the wetlands delineation two years ago um, and I'm going through the chair but I spoke with Mr. O'Driscoll okay. um, and I asked him because I was trying to figure out what had happened here um, I spoke with Mr. O'Driscoll and asked him had he done the delineation for the wetlands he explained Mike still working oh, yeah, yeah it's for the audience at home okay um, he explained to me at the time, and I still probably have notes and dates and everything, that he surveyed the delineation, that he did not perform the delineation. He also told me at the time that um, he was working with FACED, I believe it was, engineering. Oh. Yeah. Chris? Is your mic green? Sure. It's still green. Did it have a green light? Yeah, it's green. Okay, just check it. Can you not hear? Just try, just try that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue, Lorraine. Try to speak more loudly, too. Can you hear? Um, and Mr. O'Driscoll told me at the time that it was a group called I think it was Patriot Realty or something that they were working for, and that he thought it might be Jerome Carr who, who might have actually delineated or, or done the wetlands determination. Um, I then followed up because you weren't sure, oh, excuse me, Mr. Carr was, uh, excuse me, Mr. O'Driscoll wasn't sure, he just didn't have a recollection of who had done it. Sure. So I then went to uh, the former um, Conservation Commission agent Marie Simpson to ask her if she could review her records and see. She wasn't the agent, she was the administrator. Okay, I'm sorry. Mixing it up, but I thought she might. An important difference. Okay, I apologize. But I went to Marie Simpson to see if she could help me. She said it would not have been Jerome Carr because the commission had stopped using him right about 2006, 2007. Um, that company no longer exists, so I couldn't check with them directly. But she did, and I'm going to have to look at old notes, she did think she knew who it was. She said it wasn't a gentleman by the name of Forrest Emery either because Janet had just come on board at that time, and Janet just wasn't fond of Forrest, but that she would give me the name of the firm that did it. But it was very clear based on my conversations with both Marie and with Mr. O'Driscoll that he did not do the wetlands determination. He said to me clearly two years ago that all he did was survey it. So I, I just want to be okay. clear as to Do you agree history. with that or? I, I remember having a, a conversation, Mrs. Sweeney, um, 
Use the mic, please. Uh, I do recall having a conversation. I don't remember ever being asked if I did the wetlands myself. I did say I was a surveyor involved in the project. And when she asked me about certain questions on the soil testing, I said that everything we've done is public record and is on file with the town. Okay. Thank you. Lorraine, do you have something? Yeah, I have many more. Okay, try. <laughs> Um, but that's just going back to 2006, 2007. Um, there was a lot of information covered here this evening, yes. and there is no way I'm going to remember it all. Um, I was thinking as things were stated that that's not my understanding of what the conditions were, mm -hmm. but I'll just highlight some of the things that are troubling to me this evening. Um, going back to the... Um, communications with um, this board. Yesterday, I received a copy of um, a letter that Mr. O'Hart submitted, I'm guessing, as a position regarding the history of this site. Um, many of the statements made in there were inaccurate, including statements to the effect of that the original chairman had um, said everything was okay, that Janet approved it, and rather than have a he said she said okay. I brought a tape of that meeting for the commission to look at yeah no it's on, brought their it's own on television too yeah. so okay. um, but there's many things stated um, for example with respect to the um, <coughs> ORAD um, well I'll go back to yeah the original order of resource area delineation um, I appealed it because I disagreed with it um, and uh, it was reviewed, and a superseding order of resource area delineation was issued. Um, I did not appeal the ORAD to Superior Court because it was clear that only a single BVW was being sought at that point in time. The application itself states that. I, so Superior Court wasn't an option. Right. It was just DEP. So then I went and was involved. I was part of that site walk that Mr. Crossman referred to. Um, I participated in that. And I then, when the SORAD was actually issued, um, I spoke with uh, the section chief for the Central Regional Office of DEP. Um, <coughs> and, uh, her name's escaping me now. It'll come to me. But in any event, um, she had said to me that the reason the isolated vegetated uh, wetland was also shown um, was only because they observed it while they were out there, but that typically they do not. And she and I did enter a conversation regarding the possibility that perhaps in the past it was one larger BVW, but that they look at it as a snapshot. Right. They can only look at it as a s that point in time, and they can't go backwards. Right. When I asked the section chief about um, local bylaws and any potential violations, she made it very clear to me they would not go there. That's not their jurisdiction. They don't okay. go looking for it. So I'm just there's there many, a lot many of it, well, and that's why we're here. We're <laughs> trying to grab all the facts so that a proper decision, conclusion can be made, and a decision by this board can be made. So uh, we appreciate everybody's input. So thank you. But I would. I'm hoping that the board doesn't reach some sort of conclusion this evening because a lot of testimony was given and I think it's only fair to the neighbors that we have an opportunity to respond to everything not just quickly on the spot okay. um, because there is information based on what I heard this evening that I'm going to go seek and present to this board okay is there anybody else in the audience yes sir Larry Clark 130 Seacock Street my property is Lexus. I've been to this property for 35 years. I have an ATV. And all through those woods in the last 30 odd years, I know that cart path by heart. I know the footpath by, uh, footpath by heart. Um, never, I, I stopped going there when Mr. O'Hart bought it. I didn't want to get in trouble with trespassing or anything. But up until then, I had been through there. Never did I ever see what I saw in those pictures at one of the ZBA meetings the gravel roads or anything. I'd seen clearing, but I'd never seen anything like that. I'd, I used to take that 
cut a footpath all the way up to where Stop River was. I used to go there before Stop River was ever built. Um, I knew those woods like the back of my hand, and never did I see what I saw pictures of at one of the ZBA meetings. Okay. That's all I just give you that information, so because I know that's kind of a yep. questionable issue. But thank you. That's what I witnessed. Any, but okay, so, uh, okay. Let this woman. No, you have. You got the microphone. Why don't you go okay. ahead, and then we'll. <laughs> ladies first. Karen Clark, 130 Seekong Street. Just a quick question to the board for clarification. Are all the areas that are in question as far as potential tampering with wetlands, are those all, are all those areas areas that were, how do I say it, were driven over by the applicant, filled by the applicant, <coughs> gravel added by the applicant? <coughs> in other words, are all those areas areas that receive some kind of disruption we don't know if it was prior to Mr. O'Hart buying the property or if it was recent within the last two years before the cease and desist order was put in place. So that's why we're trying to go through all past files, minutes, uh, videos, and getting this type of information so that we can make the proper and fair uh, decision for, for Mr. O'Hart in the town. And my final question is, um, I believe it was back in like 2005, 2006, there was a developer that wanted to put, uh, I believe, 10 to 12 homes um, up off of Stop River, but on that property, the same property. And it was my understanding at the time that the reason that he was basically cutting the property in half was because of wetlands, and he was going to develop the front portion, which is the Stop River end. That's here, say, we can't, that's not information we can take but he was going to it's a fact I believe that he was going to make that back acreage um, open yeah. space yeah okay if that's correct thank you thank you hi Edward Sweeney 14 stop river I just want to reiterate the, co the Commission has heard a lot tonight I don't think a lot of people came here expecting that we were going to have the testimony of three or four uh, expert shall we say uh, without an opportunity to um, to give a direct reply to this there's a lot of information I think I think a lot of the information was given in a very misleading it was categorized as otherwise but I think it was a lot of misleading information that was given to the board and I think that could be corrected if, if the neighborhoods and the abutters have an opportunity okay. to respond well, we'll take the information and as uh, both attorneys have said that you know different things have been in the are in the files going back uh, a year or two and also back to the 2007 area so we'll none of us were on the board at that time so we have to refresh ourselves with some of that information we've looked at some of it but not complete file opening all the files and clearly we need to do that thank you in a timely manner too May I just speak one more time? One more time. I promise. Just one thing that I think is very important is that in August of 2007, is that when it was filed? Yeah, August of 2017 when the original ANRAD was filed, the existing conditions plan did not reflect existing conditions. And there were revisions made to that plan through December of 2017. No at no point during that entire period did they update or show any of the unpermitted construction activity and its impact on the grading um, to this commission so, or the members that were present at the time. So what they were looking at was not an accurate existing conditions plan. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Does the commission have any questions? Any of the commissioners? <laughs> Not at this point. Okay. I don't. Chris? Mr. Chairman, um, as I indicated at the outset, we're not supposed to be here tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we came here as a courtesy, uh, hoping that there's actually some good faith at play. I feel like the board, the Conservation Commission is listening and has listened to what we have said. Um, but we will likely will not appear before this board again. Okay? okay. We have litigation against the board to shut this investigation down mm -hmm. uh, your answer in that case is due very soon 
If the board takes action, we'll obviously appeal that on all the grounds I've mentioned. I'd add tonight, just for the record, one more thing. These activities occurred more than two years ago now, okay? Mm -hmm. It's past the statute of limitations. Now, Attorney Hill is going to tell you that it's a continuing fill situation, but there have been cases recently that suggest that that's not as, uh, as hard and fast as, as uh, one might argue. Okay. So another grounds for this to be denied. But in closing, just to explain how dangerous these allegations are as far as, well, there might be a wetland, there likely could be a wetland, let me do more investigation regarding a wetland. They're dangerous. They've kept me up at night. They really have. So if I've gotten heated tonight, having been called a liar, all right, it, it, it really affects me to see how uh, people undertake to fight these projects when they're proposed. And Attorney Hill is a 40B attorney. Um, and he was brought in by the ZBA, and now he's representing this commission, okay? Um, you know, we've been seeking public records that have not been forthcoming, all right? Initially they were. We're, we're going to continue to seek those to see what else might be going on behind the scenes. So this, is, this has kept me up at night. But just to give you a graphic example of what we're dealing with here, okay? As Ms. Sweeney noted, she appealed the zoning board's decision saying that they were not going to impose a fine or require wetland replication. So she sued the zoning board and Mr. O'Hart to force the zoning board to require wetland replication. Again, based on Mr. Garner's original report from February of 2018 water on frozen ground, okay? In that litigation, she's since asserted that the water on, that the, that the soil testing that was undertaken in August of 2017 caused a sinkhole to form on her property 500 feet away, all right? That's a graphic example of what these types of allegations can lead to, all right? That, that now that she said that soil testing on the site 500 feet away has caused a sinkhole to form on her property. Now, interestingly enough, that sinkhole formed 10 years prior or however many years prior, and we'll pursue that in Superior Court. But it's dangerous to throw around allegations like these fighting a 40B project. If you don't like the project, don't give us a permit. We have to come back before this board with a notice of intent. You can deny it and fight it there. Well, as we said, we're not denying the 40, we're <coughs> not addressing the 40B at all. I know <coughs> what you've said and what evidence you have, but the minds of these all of our commissioners and what we have talked about in executive session, nobody has a heavy heart to say, bad, 40B, bad, stop this thing, look at all the neighbors don't like it. We are looking at evidence. Uh, we have two attorneys on our commission, so, and one is an environmental lawyer, and they're giving us advice on how to navigate through all of this information. And um, as chairman, I can, I can attest that we're not, we don't have any prejudice coming in. When we took on this thing, we took it on. It, I, it was an open meeting, and I said, here's what ZBA said. Here's what ZBA would like us to do because it's not their jurisdiction. What do you want to do? And everybody said, we need to look at it just to verify one way or another, clear it up, and let Mr. Uh, I, and so that's what we're trying to do here, I, and I, what we've been trying to do over the last few months. <coughs> um, and I've learned a lot over the last few months, and uh, some of the decisions that were made um, may not have been the right ones for us. And um, but we're, we'll address everything. So respectfully, we may submit additional information, but we'll Please. decline any further info any further requests to appear okay. before the board. And All right. Whatever if, the board's yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just this is this is the antithesis of 40B. Okay. Okay. So that's the other beauty of 40B is that it's complex. So attorneys like myself and Attorney Hill have to deal with these complexities. Yeah. Okay. There's no case right now that says that what the board's doing is not in accordance with the law. So clearly, uh, a zealous advocate for the town that is not happy with the proposal is going to exploit that. And they've done it well because I'm here tonight. And again, I shouldn't be here, all right? We appreciate that you are here, Mr. O'Hart. Um, and as I said, we'll try to get our, all the information put together so we can assess it. We'll go into executive sessions and tear everything apart. And, uh, but why executive session? I think we need to talk about a few things. In private. A lot has happened behind the scenes on no, this. No, not no. The only th time we've had executive sessions is to go over the Gardner report. 
and uh, we'd come up with questions, ask Pat, he would give them back to us. We'd go into an executive session, talk about them, and that's why there was a little bit of a delay in getting the final report because we challenged him on various items uh, that he had put into the report. So, um, but that's all that we've done behind closed doors. We haven't done anything else. And once we release the minutes of those meetings, you'll see that. Uh, and that will happen after litigation is over. Mr. Yeah. Chair, could I just ask the applicant, are you going to provide the Rockwood report to us? Actually, tonight, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't know if the board's going to take any action, no action to vote, but whatever it is, the administrative record is critical to have a third party evaluate this after the fact. So we are resubmitting many of the materials that we've already submitted. We're going to submit the additional soil testing that Mr. O'Driscoll okay. submitted Please. so that you have that for that one test pit and some of the additional ones. Um, and uh, John Rockwood's, again, he's not been on the site. He's not claiming to have been on the site. He's merely informed this board that the methods that were employed were incorrect and insufficient and the analysis of what resulted from those uh, methods was mm -hmm. incorrect. So you've heard that testimony tonight. We'll submit that report. Um, I, I'm, I'm disappointed that it's gotten this far, all right? Um, that's, it, it, again, it's kept me up at night, and I really wish it hadn't. Okay. Um, but hopefully uh, cooler minds will prevail and reasonable minds will prevail, and we'll get this back in front of the zoning board where uh, we're presenting the, hear the, the application in a vacuum. They're engaging a wetlands expert, mm -hmm. okay? as they should, who could critique all this. But uh, they've been clear with that wetlands expert that this investigation is somehow separate. And that's what we, we have a, 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 just a, a critical disagreement on that point, and it's a legal issue. Mm -hmm. I hope not to be called a liar again about it, but uh, okay. th there are a lot of difficult uh, legal issues at play and, and a lot of information to digest. And you're all volunteers, okay? And I, I know you're volunteering your time, um, so I hope in, in volunteering your time, uh, at some point, like I said, this this investigation uh, has to end. So this Correct. idea that we've we've think there likely are wetlands and we have to uh, recommend further investigation, you, you got a warrant, mm -hmm. okay? And we've appealed that warrant. Oh, sorry, we filed the notice of appeal. Let me just correct something said earlier. A notice of appeal is not an appeal. It's a notice of an intent to appeal. We withdrew that without prejudice, okay? after discussions with the clerk and the appellate division to the effect that our rights would ripen if this board chose to take any action based <coughs> on it. So that information is still defective. It's not a legal argument for Dan, Elizabeth, and I to play out wherever we end up playing it out. I hope the town doesn't spend any more money fighting that sort of thing, okay? Because there's a lot of hard-earned tax dollars well, on stop this. filing things, then, because <laughs> you're the one who's causing okay. the okay. Stop. okay. Can I just get no. a clear answer as to when that's going to be filed? Uh, when is the Rockwood report going to be filed? I'm going to submit it right tonight. I okay, have, thank I you. Have copies okay. of it. You can have it. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and again, as volunteers, town residents, Ted is a town resident. Uh, we want to be fair to everybody and to, to, for, and to Ted. So... We will, with clear mind, try to come up with uh, conclusions and decisions um, and come back and uh, present it. And uh, hopefully we can talk to Ted and tell him what's going on. And uh, he can decide if he wants to come when we formally pr present it uh, in a commission meeting. I have a very quick one for you. I think it's probably apropos to note that uh, I know this is a 40B project, but I want to put on the record that I have not seen a 40B plan. I've never heard a word about density. I don't know whether four units are being proposed or 400. Uh, I, I know nothing. I just simply walked out on the site and tried to be objective about what I saw. Okay, thank you. Okay, commissioners, how would you like to proceed? <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, j just yes. so you know, um, we had intended to undertake extensive soil testing in addition to what we did in August of 2008, uh, 2017, shortly thereafter. But the stop work order, subsequent allegations of wetland alterations, uh, we haven't done anything since then. Um, we're going back out on the site, all right? We have a permit pending before the ZBA. 
We've been asked by the ZBA to conduct additional soil mm -hmm. testing, yep. so the dirt is going to fly. It's going to fly in these areas of alleged alterations. Um, so when you're going you, to get more soil info. When potential. do you think you'll be doing that? Tuesday of next week. Oh, okay. Oh. It's, it's, coordinated with, it's coordinated with Sean Reardon from Tetratech. Okay. Uh, via the ZBA. Okay. Yeah, I knew watching the ZBA meetings of where you were going and what was going to be done. So. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. So next Tuesday, you said? Next Tuesday. And how uh, do they do reports? Is there information? Will uh, that come they're over? going to be witnessed by Tetra Tech's uh, soil expert. Full soil horizon profiles are going to be documented and witnessed. No one's going to go up there alone and... No, no, how, no, many, no. how many sample soils? 26 test loads. Okay. 26 Can test Janet? No, 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 no. But how long for... No, please. But how long are those results going to come to conservation, and will it be these areas? So, well, yes. the the absolute. I mean, the process is usually that the conf the conservation commission advises the ZBA as to what they think. You can do that till your heart's content. Okay, it's the yeah. separate hearing that's been concerning. So, you will get all the information the ZBA has. You can comment on it. If you're going to allege that we violated more wetlands protection act or local zoning bylaws. You, know, you can do that at this point. Do we have to go through ZBA, or can you people just send that to us to answer some of these we questions? Can copy, we can copy on that information. I mean, it's, that would it, be actually, nice. You have the, you share Amy, <laughs> so Amy, Amy. Not yeah. well. <laughs> I know. No, I want her on my no, team as I'm, well. But no. But the punchline uh, for if if they're doing and they're checking these areas that are areas of concern, if that could just come to conservation so people can look over those <coughs> and start trying to figure so this out. So, again, being the attorney in all this and the 40B attorney, all right, I'm not my initial you, letter I'm to you, if you recall, <laughs> I addressed to the ZBA mm -hmm. and I copied you as a courtesy. Yes. And that was for that very critical reason that we don't have to be in front of the CONCOM. Yeah. The ZBA is wearing your hat. So I will submit it to the ZBA, okay, but we will, ZBA. yeah, Amy, we will courtesy copy whoever is interested Janet. you in particular and you can distribute it to the concom but is, yeah. but is that yeah. information for yes. what we're talking oh, about okay that's good how brief. long will it take to compile the information and reports and do they do you know possibly two to three weeks okay um you know as i indicated to dan uh several times we have a permit pending before the zba yes. so if any town official wants to visit the site or agent of the town wants to visit the site as part of the 40B process, we can't say no. Okay. All right? We can't say no. Um, if someone wants to undertake a separate investigation for another board, that's what we had issue with. Okay. That's what the, uh, that's what the litigation's been about. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate everyone's attendance tonight. Um, we're going to be just... Just one thing. I know it's probably protocol, but just for clarification for us, when you do do the soil samples with the profiles, could you also indicate the typical structure of that type of soil in your report? So for example, so if it has certain A and B structures and that's what you're calling it with what you find, is that typical of what's in that area and typical for that profile? It's so we can tell whether it's system. been okay. you know, disturbed, whether it's to answer Understand. your question, yes, you know, the soil log will show uh, the horizon depth, the layer of each horizon, and certain uh, characteristics of each horizon that I believe okay. will answer your question. And then you're going to do some test pits further away from these sites so that we can pair the two? There's, there's 26 sites located, uh, I believe, yesterday. Okay. They're flagged, and I'm meeting Sean Reardon <coughs> in the morning at 8 a.m., you're welcome to come and see the site for yourself. Well, uh, the, only, the only question I have, which makes it fair for all of us, is if you say, okay, this is a disturbed area, we take all the samples here, and then we take a couple out here, and it kind of shows that, hey, this in here is typical of this whole entire area and has not been disturbed, or it's not typical and it has been. So that we can see that, you know, the, the, as you would find in, in, in disturbed area, the A and Bs are all going to be all mixed together, and that's what we want to try to... Ted, you're doing these tests for the hydrology? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. there's going to be some extensive testing in that area and, okay. and understanding you want to get a, a sense of well, the entire to, area. I, 
that's been my whole concern the whole the time population. is to have the soil profiles in the area that's disturbed and to be able to compare it to areas that have not been disturbed. So you can actually either quantify that it has or has not been disturbed. But if you only do it in the disturbed site, then you're only comparing to the disturbed I think and not to what's that. around it. That's, yeah. If you coordinate with John Reardon, we can do additional testing. Yeah, I mean, it's, well, you know what, I think we, yeah, we understand the okay. ask and we can shape our testing to address that. I think that, that in the end will help I'm, you know, help your case, if you're proving that this is, then you can say, hey, look, this is what the soil is in this area, and, and we didn't disturb below, you know, eight or ten inches, we, you know, or what's left is, so we can, it makes a better, easier determination of what so actually has or has not happened in that area. Since we're likely not coming back before the board in person, and we're having a bit of a conversation here, what's the end game? If, if, it's, if, if you order additional investigation, then you go get a war another warrant to go back out there, okay? And you receive testimony that suggests that uh, there were a BVW in that area, okay? Mr. Garner, again, is suggesting that it's all connected, so you're going to get a revised BVW plan. Are you going to have us create a wetland there? You, I know you don't know what you're going to do, but just thinking through it logically, I is that the end game? I, I mean, to to have us recreate a, a we BVW? Can't, yeah, we can't comment on that. No. We can't tell you what the end game is. I mean, we might just say... At this point in time, we are just in the process of investigating to figure out what even is at issue. That's all that we're doing at this point in time. And I guess... So I know that you made a comment that you don't have a problem with us kind of just advising the zoning board one way or the other, but I, that really is all that we're trying to... All we're trying to do is investigate what even is going on, what what's hap happening at the site. Right? For and <laughs> I guess the end game might be would be the order of conditions. There may be none. Like uh, area three, there's nothing. That's that's off the table now. But area one and two, uh, again, we got to look at all the facts and what we've heard tonight, and uh, come up with our conclusions. So. I mean, to be fair, um, we'd all agree. I mean, I agree um, with pretty much everyone that and that it, it was just an example of what happened, of, of what's out there that needs further investigation. And I think I thank you for doing the extra the, the holes, giving us the information so that we can now make an, an educated um, <coughs> decision based on, on science, not on what we think. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, should we continue this to the next meeting? And um, yeah, but that I don't want to seem like we're dragging things out. But if it's going to take them a couple of few weeks, yeah, we've got a little Should bit we of maybe time. just go I to another one so we can get that stuff in and look through it What's that? before we, if if it's going to. Well, if we we put it on as just business then it allows us to read the letter if we get it in time. If we don't get it in time, then we can just continue it to the next one. But we can also look in okay. the old files and archives. Yeah. Do you have a sense of when the letter will be ready to send over? So I'm submitting documents, uh, the, the Rockwood letter or the Rockwood evaluation of the report. Um, I indicated that we're doing the testing Tuesday, a couple weeks to <coughs> produce formal documents <coughs> for submission. So the end of October, early November. Right. You so should have your report. Do you, we can do it for November. Would that be all right for Mr. Hart? I know you, I'm, I know you don't. You may not come, but we, we, I don't look at it that way personally. I look at it yeah. as I'm giving you the opportunity to come so we'll follow the rules that are fair. Yeah. So I would never say, hey, look, um, we'll throw it on the agenda for tomorrow. That, that's not fair to you. We, we may send in documentary evidence. To, okay. to accompany the report. Sure. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll have Mr. Rockwood take a look at the profiles and, and issue an opinion, but sure. we won't physically appear before this board again. No, okay. that's, that's not fine. out of disrespect. No. It, it was out of respect for the process, which is why yes. we would not allow your expert on site. Okay. Okay. So out of respect for the process, that's how we handled it. Okay. Frankly, we don't, you know. Um, chances are, whatever you do is going to get appealed. I think uh, the Sweeney's have indicated they'll probably appeal the action. I somebody think will appeal. somebody will appeal it. Okay. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, 
we're pursuing our original litigation to stop this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We might beat you to the punch. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but I, I know, you know, I've gotten a sense tonight that you're doing your best in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. You're volunteers. You've got a lot of people whispering in your ear. You know, whether anybody admits it or not, the project is controversial. Yeah, okay. But I also do want to just emphasize that even if it is the project is con controversial, our decision is not meant to be controversial. Our decision is meant to be impartial and just our just within what this board is deciding. Mm -hmm. We're not listening to what other boards are telling us or what anybody in town. We're only listening to all the facts and the science, and that is what our decision is based on. And you're also following the advice of council, saying you're entitled to do that. We disagree with the advice your council is giving you. That's what we're arguing in court. So, but I do feel, I, do, I have gotten a sense that with council telling you to go for it, you're going for it with an open mind. So, David said that all along. We, you were, you know, I know you referred to the letter the chairman that recently <coughs> left, wrote a couple of angry letters and left. And that wasn't, I was upset personally because that wasn't a representative of how I feel that either you should be treated. Mr. Hart or Dan or anybody in the audience that's here for a project should be treated. It's up to the board. As a group, we make an informed decision, not a chairman stating this is the decision of the board of the time. And that was truly unfair. And regardless of whether he said it either way, um, it would go to one side or the other, we're here to be fair. And that truly, I know it's been referred to a couple of times, but it really bothers us that something like that you know, was done. Equally as important as a board, uh, somebody from another board stating anything to do with our commission. We, you know, we take offense to that because we're here, as Alex said, on our time, but because we care about uh, the environment and think it's important. And, um, <coughs> but on the same time, like I've said, Mr. O'Hart has a right to build as long as he's doing it um, according to our bylaws, and that's the only thing we're testing and the only concerns we have, and that's why I suggested more pits for you. And that would aid you in your decision. And, Whether, you know, and I think it's because we need to be informed. What, we felt, we're looking what at. we felt was fair was engaging in the ORAD process that we applied for, and it's in court, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. for a uh, essentially determination of non applicability for the rest of the site, okay? We paid the local filing fee. Can we get that back? Can we get the local filing fee back? We paid for a delineation on the local bylaw. Fifteen hundred dollars or so? Nah. We're not getting I that don't back? Know. Okay. I, I don't uh, know. I don't that, know what the answer that, is. That's determinative in our, that's determinative in our mind. Okay. okay. Um, so there are a lot of things that when we saw the Norton letter we said, Yeah, he's got it right. Why are they even going down that road? But I appreciate that what you're saying, you know, that seemed to speak for everyone and it's, you no, know, it's certainly he, um, other people feel certain he ways, but for himself, <laughs> and that's fine. Um, obviously, I agreed with him, but for another day. So, yep. Dan and I will continue to duke it out, and uh, this board can continue to do what they do best: is volunteer and try to uh, protect the town as best they can. And hopefully, between Ted and us, we can li limit the uh, minimize the uh, attorney fees. <laughs> for this so th again thank you for appearing tonight and testifying talking about it I think we've had great discussion with your experts uh, with Pat with the audience and um, we'll go for there so we'll put it on the agenda for next continue it for the next meeting October, uh, October. It's October 9th. No, well, we can br we can talk about it on October 9th. Okay. But yeah, it may be we just continued. Okay. We know it's got to be continued because of the report won't be ready. But I think between now and then we can do. And then it gives us the diligence. Do we need to make a motion to continue? Yes. Yeah. I'll accept a motion to continue. I'll make that motion to continue this hearing and uh, our next Seagon meeting Street. on 144 Seacon Street. Until uh, October 9th? Yes. And <laughs> what do we have we on the need, agenda? If it's old business, we don't need a time, right? Um, Allie's right. It's old business. We don't need a time. Okay. We have three hearings. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, it's passed. Can we, um, I'm sorry, I missed that. Who made the